So today we have uh, a study session, uh, discussion and possible action relative to timing of the creation and or updating of the county's community plans for the current general plan update. Uh, a couple of ground rules here, folks. We do want to have everybody uh, have an opportunity to speak today. However, I'd like you to keep your comments as brief as possible. There's a lot of people here today. And we're going to try to avoid redundancy. If somebody's already made your point quite eloquently, you don't need to get up and, and make it again. So uh, please respect that. Another thing is that um, we need to keep track of who is participating so that uh, we keep our contact lists updated and that the uh, minutes for this meeting are accurate. So today, anybody that wishes to speak, we'd like you to first come to the table that's over here on your far right where there's a sign-in sheet and please print your name legibly. When you then come up to the podium and you can queue over there. Next, when you come to the podium, please state your name and please spell it. It's the best way for our clerical people to keep track of who was here, who said what, and so that that information um, stays, stays on record. And uh, right now I'm going to turn this over to Stephanie Moreno, our Community Development Agency Director, to open up the meeting. Stephanie. Thank you. Stephanie Moreno, Director of Community Development. Um, I'd like to thank all of the public members who are here again today um, for this meeting. This is an important meeting for the county, and I appreciate the time and effort that you have in, in being here. Uh, there's some confusion about what is actually on the agenda today, so I wanted to review that mm -hmm. very briefly. Um, we've been asked uh, to put on the agenda a, uh, an action item for decision by the Board of Supervisors to, uh, as to what the timing will be on the updating of the community plans. Um, and I'll go through those options for you in a minute. Um, but it's not about whether or not the community plans will be updated. They will be updated at some point in time. And there's also some confusion about what the word update means. Uh, when Mintir drafted the work plan, he used the word update the community plans to signify that the existing community plans would be brought into technical consistency with the general plan just as far as how it looked. Um, not to change policies and goals and implementations, but rather just that the community plans um, would be um, uh, made consistent with the general plan and how they're uh, looked at and make sure that there's no inconsistencies between the community plan and the general plan update that would cause us grief later on. It wasn't to go back and do visioning process in each community um, and redraft community plans and go through a, a, a robust public participation on what should be in each community plan. That was um, envisioned as part of a, proce a, an, a subsequent process, subsequent contract. Um, the board did not put money in the budget um, to go through and do the full robust public participation piece on each of the community plans. So the decision that um, we're asking the board to make is on that subsequent piece that has not already gone out um, to RFP on how we want to do the robust par par public participation piece of our community planning process, uh, when that will happen, if the board wants to commit more money. Um, to it if the board wants to commit more staffing resources to it when when you want that to happen so that's what the discussion is today um, as you know we have um, a draft community plan already in place for Copperopolis that has been um, pending for some time we had intended to um, I had committed to the public to take that back out for public review uh, in the next month um, so that we can have another look at it before it comes into the Planning Commission. It's essentially done for all intents and purposes, and um, it was our opinion that that should continue. The money was already contracted for it in a previous year. Um, there's remaining money that was committed and carried over from last year to finish that community plan. So that one we had always intended on moving forward with, um, and, but we would like clarification from the board on that today, verification that that's the intent. What really is an issue is what's going to happen with the community plans and some of the other areas. We have a lot of community groups that have been working on community planning on their own time um, with their own resources. They've committed a lot of time and effort to this. They have some excellent resources. I've attended some of those meetings as a guest, um, and those include in the areas of um, 
there's been some work in Valley Springs and um, uh, District 2 communities of Glen Clover Road Flat, uh, Mountain Ranch, West Point, Wilseyville, Paloma, um, McCollamy Hill. I recently attended a meeting in McCollamy Hill. Um, I've attended a, a meeting in Murphy's. Um, we had community regular meetings up in the Arnold area. So there's been a lot of public um, talk about doing community planning and they're very interested in, on the timing and, and how they're going to be involved in that process. It's our intent to involve the public um, every step of the way on the community plans. Uh, it's important that they vision what they want for their community um, and that they have every stakeholder in the community has the opportunity to participate and vocalize their concerns about their area and um, hopefully reach a consensus on what moves forward to the Planning Commission and the Board. But again, it's a timing issue. I wanted to briefly go over um, what we feel are some of the pros and cons of the different options that are available. One option is to do nothing at all with the community plans at this time and just proceed with the general plan update. Um, the advantage of that is it allows us to focus on the general plan update itself and get it into a technical shape so that we don't have questions of adequacy. It also saves the immediate cost um, because we've already budgeted for the general plan update over a two-year period. It would not require any further expenditures. Um, on the, uh, the other side of the coin, it would guarantee that there would be future additional costs. Um, running the community plans with the general plan update will save money on the environmental review process. As you are well aware, EIRs are very expensive to process. If we have to do individual EIRs for each community plan at a later date, it's going to be much more expensive than running the community planning now and doing an EIR um, for everything at once later on. We will save conceivably a lot of money. It will also guarantee ongoing controversy in those community areas that are being missed for specific issues that they feel are there. Uh, they will continue to be concerned about those issues and that could actually slow down the, the overall general plan update process if we end up spending a lot of time individual community issues within the big overall general plan update. It also will um, keep the community development agency um, in the business of doing piecemeal general plan and zoning changes um, because not taking a look at the community plans which are even more outdated in some cases than the general plan itself would mean that we'd continue to have to process general plan and zoning changes at a later date possibly or the board would be required to make decisions in communities on projects coming forward without any clear idea of what the community um, feels is in the best interest of their community there. Another option for the board is to uh, designate uh, one or more community plans to proceed now and to delay the rest till the end of the general plan update. Um, as we indicated, we had um, planned on doing that with Copperopolis anyway. That's within our existing work plan to continue with that project. Um, a couple of the other key areas that the board has discussed previously for priority are the District 2 communities of Railroad Flat Glencoe, West Point, Wilseyville, and um, uh, Mountain Ranch. Is that right, Steve? Is it Mountain Ranch or uh, actually, I think the, the four what communities? Was in the, the actual resolution was uh, just the four Blue Mountain communities. The Blue Mountain uh, communities, okay. But other towns in District 2 had been working I apologize. alongside those. Okay, so those were the priorities for the Blue Mountain communities. And, um, and then the other priority, I believe, was the um, Valley Springs area um, was indicated as a high priority because of the growth that is occurring down there at this time. Um, that being said, almost every area that we have had a meeting in has in, indicated an interest in developing a community plan or um, preserving their community plan um, with minor changes. I think the only community that I know of that adamantly wants, that I've heard adamantly wants no changes is Rancho Calaveras. They would like us to just leave them alone at this time. Um, but I don't know if that's a consensus of the area, but we've heard that pretty regularly. Um, the third option is to allow every community plan to, to um, proceed concurrently with the general plan update. Again, um, that will um, take our focus away from just the general plan update. We'll have staff resources working in a variety of areas. It will be 
possibly a little bit more scattered on our staff resources, especially given the staffing shortages that we currently have. However, it would be um, uh, financially um, more feasible and economically more viable for the, the uh, county to proceed in that area. It will um, save money later on down the line if we do it all at once. Um, the downside of doing that uh, also would be that the community may be confused as to whether they're working on community plan or the general plan um, because they are um, uh, distinct products in some ways and it could be confusing for public participation process, although I think that's a minor to be addressed with uh, an education and outreach program. Uh, the fourth option would be for the board to stage the community plans and proceed with the um, high priority ones um, now or to indicate that you want one or two to move forward now and give definite dates for when you want the others to move forward so that we can time them and stage them so that we're um, focusing primarily on the overall general plan update but that we try to manage to get them all done in time to incorporate and roll them into the EIR. Um, and that would be a juggling act. It would take uh, a lot of organizational skills but I believe that that is a, an also a viable option for us to consider. For example, um, have Copperopolis and uh, Valley Springs move forward now um, have the um, District 2 and the um, San Andreas move, start in January, have the other communities lag behind <coughs> that a few more months so that by the time we get done with the EIR, we can um, hopefully make sure that we've covered all of the issues. So those are the options that we've outlined. You may have more that you want to take into account today. I know the public um, is very keenly interested in giving public comment on this issue today. Are there any opening comments from the board before I invite the public? I just want a clarification on the copper plan, Stephanie. Yes. Um, the, you want to proceed with the copper plan, or we? What general plan will it be evaluated against? The current general plan? We we would proceed with it so that it would come into the county. It wouldn't be a standalone document. So, I would anticipate that by the it would get. It would get policy review by the board. If the board likes what's there, it would come back through a formal process of being included in the EIR work for the general plan update okay. so that it's all done at one time. All right, so it's not that we're going to do it now with the current general plan, it would be with the It wouldn't be adopted now as a standalone document. Um, we have an opinion from County Council that we cannot do that, but we would get it done so that it rolls with the EIR for the um, general plan okay. update. So if we don't do our general plan EIR for three years, this copper plan won't be evaluated then until we get close to doing the EIR for the general plan. Not necessarily. Um, there are some very large projects down in the area that are doing EIRs and much of that work can be used um, to um, expand upon for copper community plans. So if for some reason the general plan update got delayed for three years, there is a, another opportunity to do the environmental work for copper plan. But again, County Council has indicated we can't adopt it as a standalone and consider it to be um, um, in compliance with the, the OPR regulations unless we also fix the technical pieces of our general plan update. Okay. So, so it really is so, a juggling I mean, act. Yes. You can't, we can't take action on it until we've taken action on, or close to taking action on the <coughs> updated general plan. Okay. You could take action on it. It would not clear up uh, the legal challenges that we are facing at this time. Are there any other preliminary comments before I open it up to the public? Just okay. thanks for, for being here and uh, for those of you who are recidivists from last time, thank you uh, for your forgiveness if it's there. Haven't they been sitting here since then? <laughs> uh, no, I was here and they weren't there. Okay, folks, I want to reiterate a couple of things before we get started. <clears throat> One. Uh, when you come up to, sp to the podium to speak, I'd like you to queue up at this table on your right and sign your name in first. And then when you get to the podium, please state your name 
and spell it please and remember that today we are here to discuss the relative the relativity of timing to the creation and or updating of the county's community plans and I would like you to keep your comments uh, on target please we're not going to discuss any particular projects today or other related items it just it gets things too complicated confusing and drawn out to do that so if you respect that I will I will appreciate it very much uh, mr. chairman if, if, if you'll indulge me for a, a moment uh, for for uh, people in the room who may not uh, recognize the fact that uh, I'm my name is Russ Thomas I represent uh, the um, uh, district 5 but for quite a good many years before I got elected to this position I, I was the chairman of the Copperopolis community plan and at the risk of being overly redundant on that the, that group um, went through all the processes uh, we spent a good deal of, of money and, and years of public in, involvement uh, getting the plan up to the point including having uh, two uh, very uh, well attended public meetings and it was uh, that, that occurred about two years ago and we were given some assurances that the Copperopolis community plan with a ribbon around it was, was going to be delivered to the Board of Supervisors almost immediately I mean there was an expect expectation that it would be delivered the next month now that took place two years ago um, and certainly there's been uh, a, a lot of uh, transition in uh, I mean I, I replaced the former supervisor and, and uh, uh, a lot of things have happened since then but I, I, I just I, I feel like I beat this thing to death but, but we the the opportunity for to for us to get our plan adopted was was withdrawn from us 24 months ago and many of us feel that that was uh, uh, an unfortunate timing so I just uh, I feel compelled to to bring that to the forefront and make no apologies for for that explanation uh, many of us feel you know very uh, emotionally tied to that plan and uh, that's why we're arguing so strenuously to uh, have the, the board look upon that particular plan with a little bit different uh, view than some of the others so thank you for that opportunity Thank you for your uh, note of encouragement about the timing. That'll go over well. <laughs> Thank you very much. It, it still is a lot of confidence in everybody that their community plan is going to be done within a month. That's all we well, we're not in the midst of a, uh, another election in District 5 right now. So. Okay. Mr. Infacino. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Infacino. I N F as in Frank, U S as in Sam, I N O. And I'm the facilitator for the Calaveras Planning Coalition. The Calaveras Planning Coalition is composed of community or groups, organizations, and individuals interested in growth and planning issues in Calaveras County. The coalition is united in its belief in the need for a comprehensive update to the Calaveras County General Plan. Further, the coalition believes that citizen participation is key to the successful update of the general plan and necessary to the update of community plans throughout the county. Over the past 20 months of traveling from community to community to discuss the general plan update, it's been my great privilege to get to know some of the good people of Calaveras County. I have found the good people of Calaveras County to be a diverse lot. So have other people, it sounds like. <laughs> they vary in religion, in politics, in age, in tastes, and in voice. Some work hard in the forest or on the range, while others are retired. Some are busy meeting the needs of the many tourists who visit this beautiful area, while others serve the needs of those who call Calaveras their home all year round. Some live here in Calaveras but have to work elsewhere, while others work here in Calaveras and have to live elsewhere. However, despite their many differences, I have found that these good people are united in at least one thing, their intense love for this land you call Calaveras. From the wide open ranges to the mini ranchettes, from the sprawling oak woodlands to the quaint downtowns, from the vast conifer forests to the family orchard, from the deep river canyons to the proudly owned family homes, 
The good people of Calaveras County deeply and profoundly love the landscape they call home. I have found that most of the people are here and hope to stay here because of their heartfelt connection to their close family and dear friends, because of their deep and abiding connection to this glorious landscape, and because of their strong faith that the good people of Calaveras County will protect the diversity of its rural legacy. The coalition believes that the county can best protect this diversity by upgrading the community plans. I'm here today to provide you with three compelling reasons to upgrade the community plans during your comprehensive general plan update. Reason number one, community plans provide the best model for reflecting community diversity. A review of the existing community plans and the general plan shows that some communities want historic district design guidelines while other communities do not. Some communities are concerned about development on steep slopes while other communities are not. Some communities are concerned about localized flood hazards while other communities are not prone to flooding. And some communities are concerned about regulating excess development while others are seeking to encourage new development. Put one way, community plans provide for creative planning solutions problems. They provide local people the opportunities to meet local planning goals in locally desirable ways. Put another way, community plans provide opportunities for communities to maintain their values without imposing them on the rest of the county. They provide a convenient place for skilled politicians like yourselves to safely store strongly held but merely local viewpoints. For example, if stargazers in Arnold want outdoor lighting standards to reduce light pollution, their community plan can do that without imposing similar constraints on, say, Valley Springs. In this way, community plans can help both respect community diversity and to reduce uh, the conflict over which policies will end up applying uniformly to the entire county in the, in the general plan. Reason number two, the upgrade of the community plans is very popular. It has been much easier for the coalition to organize folks to discuss upgrades of their community plans that affect them the most than it has been to get folks interested in the countywide general plan, which is kind of hard to get your head around when you think about it. Um, people in places like Copperopolis and in District 2 uh, uh, who are without community plans now want community plans for their area, and they continue to work hard to develop and refine these plans on their own. People in places like Valley Springs want their community plan updated to reflect current and future conditions, and they are raising funds and holding workshops to update their plan on their own. People in places like San Andreas want the goals and policies of their community, plans impl community plan implemented, and they are drafting implementation measures on their own. Uh, People with community plans of more recent vintage just want to hold on to what they have by ensuring that their plans meet the standards of modern planning law. My dear supervisors, I suggest to you that the community plan upgrade train has left the station and has a full head of steam behind it. I implore you, do not stand in its way. The smart move is to meet the train at the next station and incorporate these upgraded plans into your comprehensive general plan update. Reason number three, you have to plan for the development of these communities anyway to properly update the general plan. That's part of the conversation you were having over here a moment ago. To conform to state law, the general plan must include a map showing the land use designation for every acre in the county, including the acres currently covered by existing community plans. Those land use designations must be defined in the general plan. There is no way to avoid planning for these communities. The real question is do you want to build on the existing community plans or do you want to start from scratch with some other planning model? You are already collecting community input. Why not put it to good use by upgrading the community plans? In conclusion, I would like to remind you that when I came before this board in January of 2006, 20 months ago, I gave you three pieces of advice on how to proceed with your general plan update. I encouraged you to improve upon what others have done, to leave no one behind, and to seize the day. By upgrading the existing community plans, you will, you will improve upon what others have done. By adding the new community plans, you will leave no one behind. But how do you seize the day? What is the prize to be won by your vote today to upgrade the community plans during the general plan update? Your vote will inspire communities throughout Calaveras County to continue to cooperate with the rest of the general plan update process. 
Your vote will respect the wishes of highly motivated communities to chart their vision for a brighter future. Your vote will energize community members to continue their volunteer efforts to upgrade their community plans. So today the coalition stands with the people from Arnold who want to retain the integrity of their existing community plan and we ask you the board to stand with them. Today the coalition stands with people in Murphy's and San Andreas and Valley Springs who are working to upgrade their community plans and we ask you the board to stand with them. The coalition stands with people in Copperopolis and in District 2 who long for the adoption of their first community plans and we ask you the board to stand with them. Please take this opportunity to stand with all of us. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the good people of Calaveras County. Good afternoon, my name is Joyce Teckel, T-E-C-H-E-L. I'm here as a representative of MyValleySprings.com. This is the third time citizens are trying to get an updated Valley Springs community plan without any county support. In 1983, the director of the planning department, Brent Harrington, responded to a request to update the plan by asking the residents to wait for available funding and staff, to wait a couple of years until the airport plan was done. The planning director further recommended that, quote, we not consider any additional general plan amendments for Valley Springs until the plan is rewritten. Additionally, I would further recommend that we not consider any additional rezonings in Valley Springs. That was in 1983. The development map from myvalleysprings.com, which I'm going to hand out to you again, shows that the county continues to approve projects while Valley Springs sits with a five page long, 30 year old community plan. The Greater Valley Springs area is being buried in projects while traffic problems and local flooding episodes go unresolved. Some developers are clear cutting the oaks just because they can. As a community, we are having our future options closed off. Thank you. I just want the record to note that if it wasn't for Joyce and some of her colleagues, we wouldn't even have a rim fee. Hello, my name is Sharon Romano, R-O-M-A-N-O. -O. I'm here as a resident of San Andreas and a member of Citizens for San Andreas, which just which is just one of many groups that are actively involved in looking out for the future of Calaveras County. CSA, short for Citizens for San Andreas, is a broad-based group of volunteers with no profit motives and no special interest ties that were wanting smart growth. CSA is just one group in the county made up of your constituents representing merchants, the arts community, children, education, service organizations, seniors, and local government, who all believe the communities that make up Calaveras County have unique characters and needs that can only be preserved by each having their own updated community plan. <coughs> Excuse me. CSA is currently working on an update to the uh, San Andreas community plan based on needs that were made obvious when it hosted a meeting on June 14th of this year at which about 130 San Andreas residents attended. At that meeting and over the last few months, San Andreas residents have completed about 250 surveys that clearly express their vision of the community and why there should be an updated community plan. Because of my limited time here, I'm only going to use just one example, and that has to do with how big should San Andreas be. According to the September 8, 2006 Calaveras County Land Use Assumption Report, the build-out based on the existing general plan would be over 8,000 dwellings in San Andreas. The November 2006 Wastewater Facilities Master Plan reports that with current technology, the topography of the area, 
water quality requirements, and other factors, the San Andreas Sanitary District will only be able to support 4,600 dwelling units. About 250 recent surveys from San Andreas residents shows that the community would like to limit the maximum population to about 6,000, which would be about 3,000 dwelling units. So how will this issue, as well as many others, be addressed if there is no updated San Andreas community plan? How will the issues important to Valley Springs, Murphy's, West Point, and the other distinct, unique communities of our county be addressed if there are no updated community plans? The community is here, willing to help make this happen. Are you going to work with us, let us work with you, or are you going to turn your backs and continue business as usual? Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Hello, um, members of the Board of Supervisors and Calaveras citizens. Uh, my name is Pat Goodman, G-U-T-T-M-A-N-N. And I'm a member of the Citizens for San Andreas and the Calaveras Planning Coalition. I'm here today to urge you to fund the community plan development with robust public input concurrently as an integral part of our general plan update process. As stated in the Calaveras Interboat, community plans are more precise and localized, giving residents an opportunity to determine how their neighborhood will grow and develop. It is vital that citizens have direct input to the, into the future of their neighborhoods. An example of the need for input can be illustrated by the consensus at recent town hall meeting in San Andreas and the results of the survey that she just uh, alluded to. Over 10% of the population of San Andreas responded to the survey. With one-third of the surveys tabulated at this time, a majority surveyed said they would like to see a rural lifestyle and open space preserved. They also said they don't want any more gas stations in San Andreas. <laughs> it's the only place that has a reasonable price for gasoline. This, this is true. <laughs> I believe that the residents of San Andreas, in their wisdom, know what's best for their neighborhood. The American Farmland Trust conducted a cost of community services study, and it was conducted in 24 states from coast to coast. They found that the cost of residential development was greater than the revenue received. The, mean, minimum, the medium cost per dollar of revenue raised was $1.19 for residential land use. Our county departments are strained to provide services to an ever-growing population with inadequate revenues generated. Are we going to pay now or pay later? Calaveras County was recently the target of a high-profile expensive lawsuit brought on by Tuolumne County because Calaveras didn't provide proper road infrastructure for, for proper circulation to accommodate the fast pace of growth in the Copperopolis area and it's impacting Tuolumne County. If Copperopolis had a community plan in place to address those issues, there may not have been a large settlement paid by, by the taxpayers. Again, pay now or pay later. The grand jury recommended the following regarding general plans. Quote, the process and progress be monitored by future grand juries to assure individual community plans are reflected in the final document. And you handed the community a carrot regarding the development of community plans, and the community responded enthusiastically. You are now possibly advocating taking it away because of costs. You thought it was important enough to apply for a grant to fund community plans. I hope we get the grant, but I don't believe it should be money driving the support of community plans. I propose that you can't afford not to fund community plans. Citizens need to provide their valuable input through community plans for our county to successfully plan for its future. It's the foundation of our way of life. It's democracy. And as I said before, pay now or pay later. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Ms. Chair, Goodman. If You're, I may, I'd just like to make one clarification. I was going to do that. On those comments. Yes. The, uh, uh, on the copper and the lawsuit with Tuolumne County. Am I on? And the lawsuit with Tuolumne County, the taxpayers didn't pay a penny. That was a lawsuit against Oak Canyon and their development uh, 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 on their EIR. Uh, it had nothing to do with the development of, of, of roads and circulation in Calaveras County. It only had to do with uh, Tuolumne County. Uh, and quite frankly, the people are going over there so they can shop at Staples and Walmart uh, uh, in the big box stores uh, uh, in Tuolumne County. Uh, it was settled because the developer couldn't stand the financial burden uh, of the time that the lawsuit uh, was requiring. Uh, it was not settled on its merits. So. Just a clarification. Thank you. 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 Thank you that part of the Wallace citizens that carry water for the Wallace area, not meant to be a double pun. You know that our key issue, of course, is underground hydrology and the lack of any definition. Land use law requires that a general plan be integrated and internally consistent. CEQA compliance activities require that the general plan keep community plans and specific plans updated and current. The county has identified and promised 10 communities will be updated in your December 6, 2006 work program. Several of those communities have been working at no cost, long hours to the county to update these plans. It only makes sense to go in lockstep while under updating the general plan. Please divorce yourself of the notion that there is some shortcut which saves time and money, as you may save neither in the long run. Community plans are not money issues so much as people issues. So you can see from the first paragraph that we're strongly endorsing option number three, that you look at those current plans that you can bring up even as interim uh, community plans and run them simultaneous with the community plan update. Wallace itself does not have a plan, so our group must keep a dog in the fight because inadequacies in your current general plan under land use principles cannot define for you a specific project area's boundaries in terms of available and sustainable water. Your planners have seen at least three DHS letters from the Regional Water Board uh, for surface water in our area now. Uh, further letters in current projects that you will be viewing in September request that the county integrate all projects not to exceed a potential of 400 more EDUs or water connections in the Wallace Lake Estate area. You have another 33 well projects up before the planning commissioners soon. Uh, now you have another project I will not identify coming up for review, alleging to be, by the way, on the same deep aquifer uh, and in a state of overdraft. You have uh, copies and documents relating to all three of these that show that while one project alone can sustain 78 million gallons of water a year, there is another EIR before you that is saying it will be pulling from the same aquifer and it is pulling 94 million gallons a year. What puts your jeopardy in terms of the long-term uh, water availability? The, this last will come before the planning commissioner soon is equivalent to 513 single-family residents. Please look at your new final Calvary land use assumptions. Wallace's potential build-out of dwelling units is listed at 852 residential units and it shows 439 residential units existing in your baseline. Current projects in a median line 
that you will be looking at already exceed the amount of build out that your new land use principles. This only points to why specific areas have specific needs that must be addressed in lockstep with updating a general plan, particularly the land use element. And in closing, a community's sense of identity rises to the front when large development projects invade its territory. Urban sprawl starts the fragmentation and it's followed by rising crime, pressures on public services that are not adequately addressed if, if you do not understand specific community plans. Wallace residents look at dwelling units and current land use maps, and we see almost no open space, nor opportunities to protect our wildlife corridors, our oaks, our water, and our rural way of life. But we do ask for us in all other community areas at least public input that is simultaneous with your general plan update. Thank you, Catherine. I'm Dave Self, S-E-L-F. And I have a very brief little note here discussing the existence of a Murphy's Community Plan. We've talked about update, and really, it could be an update. This isn't a matter of all new, all different, all wonderful, all expensive. This can be updated. In this update, I'd like to recommend that it has a structure of goals, policy, and implementation measure. And I'd like to recommend that there should be a line for organizational responsibility for that implementation. Uh, this is reflected in Murphy's peculiar concerns, particularly such things as where the traffic's going uh, as it's maturing now. But generally, we'd like to see this community plan and suggest community plans should have responsibility and accountability included, not merely goals and objectives. Thank you. Tongue. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Wright. I'm the executive director of the Foothill Conservancy. That's C-H-R-I-S-W-R-I-G-H-T. And I'm also a fourth generation Calaveras resident. And I have to say that I really like Calaveras County as it is right now. And one of the reasons why it's still a really great place to live is because of, in fact, the main reason why is because of the people who have lived here for a few months, few years, or generations. And that is critical in this time of change for Calaveras County, that we have input from each of those people throughout the county. And the best way to do that is by going into the communities where they live and talking about their particular communities. So we need to spend the time, the energy, and the money to make sure we get as much public input from these people that have protected the way of life of Calaveras County for the last several generations. And the Foothill Conservancy is willing to help out uh, with any uh, looking for grants and, and finding additional funding or, or sponsoring workshops um, throughout, throughout the county. So I appreciate your time. Board. I'm Addie Jacobson, A-D-D-I-E, J-A-C-O-B-S-O-N from Murphy's. And um, uh, Joyce Teckle's remarks made me think of something I didn't intend to say to you today. But in the summer of 2000, I came before the board as it was then comprised and asked if there could be a citizen's task force formed on clear cutting, because that was when Sierra Pacific Industries first started clear cutting up here. And although the land is private in its zone, timber production zone, there was interest finding out what did the citizens think and what was the county's relationship to that because land use does have implications and we wanted to see what, what the citizens thought and how that related to the county. At that time in 2000, I was told that county resources couldn't be freed up because of Alex Springs' community plan was the primary uh, priority of the board. 
since then, over 10,000 acres have been clear-cut in this county, and we don't have a Valley Springs community plan. So I may be back asking you for a task force. But what I, oh, Don't you on. love it when a plan Addie, comes together? <laughs> Addie, why doesn't your coalition buy the Sierra Pacific industry property up there? And then you can just well, if you want to wilderness. broker the deal with SPI, we'll sit at the table with them oh. and talk about it. We'd be happy to make that conversation happen. So if you want to be the middleman, I've asked a lot of people. I'd be happy to handle the money, Addie. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> But anyway, what I was going to talk to you about today is a lot of things that have already come before you about the interest you have in your communities. Almost every community in this county is represented here today, and we have citizens, as people have noted, who have only the public interest at heart. People aren't here with corporate interests, with uh, self-aggrandizement interests, anything like that. They're here. And they continue to be involved, although a lot of people thought initially they would, they would drift away. They haven't. They continue to come back and they care. And they're working. And I think, you know, it's really important that their, their efforts be grabbed, you know, seize the day, as Tom said. You know, use these people now and as the plan goes forward. But I do understand that one of your issues continues to be county resources and money and I just would like to say that you know you have so many people here working now whose skills continue to get better and better every time I hear the people of this county I'm amazed at how capable they continue to be articulate and how you know how fair they are in their assessment of what goes on and you've got people to work with and if you would leverage the resources you have in train the trainer techniques or whatever where you take people from each community and make sure they know what's needed in the community plan process and maximize what you put forth and put it together with the people who are here offering to work with you and it would be respectful if you had a little bit of money to throw their way to help them, but if not, there's enough people here who are working just, you know, you do things sometimes for love or money, and they're doing it for love of this county. And I'm just reiterating what someone said. Don't let money stand in your way, but let's find a way to leverage the resources you do have so nobody is left behind in this process. Thank you. My name is Greg Meyer from Copperopolis, and we've heard a lot of great reasons today why every community in, uh, in the Calaveras County Mr. Meyer, should have Mayor, spell your last name, please? Pardon me? Spell your oh, last I'm name, sorry. please. M-A-Y-E-R. Thank you. And as I was saying, we've heard a lot of great reasons today why uh, every community in Calaveras County should be uh, either have a community plan or updated community plan where it's, where it's appropriate and it's current. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Bill Albee that couldn't be here today, who is our chairperson for the Copper Office Community Plan Advisory Committee now, who inherited from Russ Thomas over here. Uh, I'm sorry uh, I won't be handing you some a, a nice uh, copied <laughs> perfect uh, set of notes here. It's, it's actually notes that I jotted down from the uh, July 24th meeting while we were waiting for you folks to come over. So. <laughs> I hope I can still read it. <laughs> we get beat up all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, our first meeting uh, and our initial work and first uh, surveys were done in 1992 in Copperopolis. And people at that time were saying, why were we interested in a community plan? Are you planning for rattlesnakes, jackrabbits, and, and the such? <laughs> uh, and, and actually, and now I think we've got quite a few people on the same page, that we're needing these community plans in all of our communities. Uh, the growth, uh, actually, plan growth was at the top of the list of our surveys at that time, and how to manage growth and, um, and make sure it's planned well. So nothing else has changed in that regard either. Uh, work was resumed in 1998 when the Board of Supervisors established the Copper Alpha's Community Plan Advisory Committee and shortly thereafter Calaveras County Lake Tullet Conservancy and the Copper Alpha's Community Center jointly applied for and received funding uh, for a legacy grant through the, the Community Center um, through the Great Valley Community Center, or Great Valley Center, excuse me. And that funding, which came from them, was approximately $40,000. And members of the community stepped up and 
contributed about $10,000 to that cause. So what, what uh, that allowed us to do is to give uh, uh, some, um, some, some, some backing to what we were doing with our community plan. And the group that, that was hired to do that was RRM Consultants, and uh, they did a very good job of town hall meetings, uh, writing up these, these studies, and, um, and uh, gave some credibility to what we were starting to do in Copperopolis. Um, <clears throat> the uh, next point I was going to make is that the, the, the committee there, like the committee uh, in most areas, I'm, I'm sure, was very diverse. It was a, uh, it was a group of people that, that, were, that was made up of teachers, biologists, ecologists, historians, uh, engineers, parents of young children, grandparents, people from real estate and construction fields, healthcare, stakeholders, lawyers, ranchers, and we had many that had experience with community plans and general plans in the past. Now, the people were asked to give their time and energy uh, to put this, this plan together, and this is over a period of uh, at least seven years, I believe, and a, a number of people uh, you know, had, to, had conflicts with work, other obligations. Over the years, they might be working in uh, the Bay Area or, or San Francisco, uh, maybe Sacramento. Uh, they would come home for these meetings. I know Russ, a lot of times we'd be calling him and asking him where he was while he was driving back from who knows where to be at that meeting at, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 or whenever it was. I know I'm, in my own case, um, you know, I was uh, in the pharmacy business, and I had to find pharmacists to replace me. And, um, you know, I had to do scheduling, and I had uh, uh, a number of things that other people also did. So I, I just wanted to make the point that the to, uh to come up with a lot of commitment here and um, uh, a lot of work and, and energy involved over a, lot, a number of years. And so we're now turning to you and asking that you step up and do your part in, in helping us uh, adopt and implement the community plan in Copperopolis. We're hoping that you give a, a, a very high priority to our plan uh, and the state it's in, as well as other plans that are in the earliest stages, <clears throat> and hoping that, that the, the cost consideration is not the total consideration here. Um, in our case, the public comment period has been uh, has, uh, has happened. We've got input that uh, has to be uh, <coughs> addressed. Uh, we've got concerned citizens groups. We have Smart Growth of, of Copperopolis that's been meeting monthly to be prepared for the final stages of, uh, of addressing what needs to be done with our community plan. There may be minor changes that have to uh, occur. Um, uh, of course, addressing these comments and possibly maybe changing the mapping to accommodate uh, the concept of accessing New Malonis Reservoir uh, for uh, re recreational opportunities, but we're very close. And um, I think that I, I can speak for most of the people in Copper opposite. We wish that our community plan uh, be adopted and implemented. Um, our last meeting that we had, uh, our Copper Office Community Plan Advisory Committee was July 14th of 05. So as Russ was saying, uh, it, it, it's um, proper, I think, to ask that, that we, give, we be given some priority and, and our, uh, our uh, plan be finalized. So, thank you. Thanks, Greg. My name is Mickey Williamson. You don't have to sing along with the spelling if you don't want to. M-I-C-K-E-Y, <laughs> W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S-O-N. I live in Murphy's. Um, I'm a member of FOCUS, the Foothill Collaborative for Sustainability, which is a group of individuals and organizations who are committed to a sustainable future for Calaveras County. And as a member of FOCUS, I'm also a member of the Calaveras Planning Coalition. And I, I um, echo everything that has been said so far, but I wanted to put two more reasons for doing all community plans concurrent with the general plan. 
and I, I put them forth in the context of what um, we not only in Calaveras County but in California and indeed our nation and our world are facing these days, which are the twin contexts of climate change and the coming end of cheap fuel and energy sources. And um, the statistics we have these days, the science we have, um, suggests that many things are likely to happen in the time of this coming community plan. Um, this is a little farther out, but just one fact is that it's estimated that by the middle, middle of the century, which is not long after the time of this community plan, the Sierra snowpack could be reduced from 25 to 40 percent, which we all know would have serious implications for water, which have serious implications for development. And so as we think about not only our general plan, but our community plans, we need to be thinking about not only going to mitigate that these proposed changes, but how we are going to plan to adapt to them. And so in the, in the, in the wise planning for those um, eventualities, one of the things that is suggested in growth is that growth happen near communities that are already planned, infill development, using um, the resources that are already in place so that we reduce driving so that services and uh, schools and shopping are placed closer to where people live. And if that's the wise growth in the communities that currently exist, it makes total sense, to me at least, that community plans are not uh, are an integral part of the general plan, that that's where the development will take place, therefore communities ought to have a big say in what those plans look like. Um, the second factor related to that is we've talked about the different stages that some of the community plans are in, some are non-existent, some are pretty well developed and could be altered slightly. Even those, in the context of what we are facing, we need to rethink even a good existing community plan. Does it account for the things that are coming in the years to come? So I just wanted to add those two to what's already been said. And along the lines of money, of resources, the time and money that it would take to do these plans, it's my belief that where, where there's a will, there's a way, and that the more important factor is not money or time, but willingness. And I truly hope that this county has the willingness it takes to do what is right, not just what is expedient. Good afternoon, Mary Boblet, B-O-B-L-E-T. Today, um, I would like to talk about tourism. Tourists have been coming to our county for over 150 years, and I'd like to advocate for those tourists recreating in our communities. In some ways, um, the natural diversity of our county actually defines what our communities look like. Um, I would like to argue that our ability to continue generating tourism dollars depends on our ability to maintain the unique character of all of these communities. Tourists don't look for homogeneous landscape features and attractions when they come to our county. They would like to visit our beautiful county and experience it whether it's hiking the foothills among the oaks or searching out those pocket meadows on the pass. Others come to taste the wine and still others come to raft the Moak River. Until we begin building an economic infrastructure supporting jobs, our county's existing and mostly small businesses need tourism to thrive. And those are your community plan people. Supporting community plans allow us to support tourism and to maintain our existing economy. It's that simple. Thank you. Joe Kelly, I'd like to applaud all the folks that have been up here and spoken. I think they're very well done. They know what they're talking about. On the other side of that, I look at something here that's a little problematic. The community director has expressed financial consequences of not incorporating community plans, yet no estimates of the update cost in that respect. And then also having stated that uh, the updates at some point in time might be done. Here's what I see, well, rather than the vagaries 
of resources and money. How about an economic impact report? I asked this question a few weeks ago. Is this county solvent? These folks have done their part. Now it's time for the county to be open and do your part. Tell us, what's the resource, manpower? Where's the money? Is the money there? If it isn't, be honest with us, tell us. Because as you well know, realistically, myself having gone through two general plans in another county that took 20 years to get into the process when they're supposed to be updated, what, every five years, every 10 years? Realistically, if it's not done now, it won't be done. And you've just wasted a whole lot of people's time. And yet you get paid for your time. These people don't. But they're, they're there wanting their communities to be a certain way, to be representative of their vision. Thank you. My name is Dave Haley, H-A-L-E-Y. I live in Copperopolis and I'm a division manager for Castle and Cook. Uh, the general plan is meant to be a planning tool. In order for it to be useful, other than regulations, it has to have a workable land plan and vision that is acceptable to the people who live in the county. In our county, each of the population centers are separated by several miles and each community has diverse topography, character, and relationship to each other and the region. Each of these communities deserves a plan that is supported by the people that live in each community and that also takes in consideration the overall character of Calaveras County. These plans should enhance the character of the area with a growth plan projecting into the future that will provide quality of life and economic viability while enhancing the envir environmental attributes within the context of a community plan. Upon completion of these community plans, they can then be melded into the, co the county general plan. Preparing a general plan ahead of major community plans will only provide a document of rules and regulations without meaningful community acceptable plans. This direction will provide no beneficial planning. My recommendation is to immediately fix the deficiencies in the current general plan and parallel the adoption of those community plans that are ready to be folded into the general plan. Life is timing and you have, have to recognize your opportunities or they will pass you by. The more time that goes by while working to achieve an acceptable general plan that includes an overall county growth plan, some of the, uh, some of the more viable and, and quality community opportunities may leave. Delay will cause future development of communities to be built denser due to the ever-increasing growth pressure and the cost of development that occurs over time. This is especially true in Copperopolis. Thank you. Is there any other member of the public that would like to address this board? Bill, have you signed in? <laughs> Pay attention. Over there, that's it. Bet. Just state your name and spell it for the clerk, please. I, I can't spell my last name. It's too hard. <laughs> That's Bill Schmidt, S-C-H-M-I-E-T-T. -T. And uh, I just uh, come here to say, and then there's Mountain Ranch. Um, the rest of you all have um, infrastructure developed. You've got a water system or a sewer system. CCWD serves you in the in a um, fashion and Mountain Ranch has no um, infrastructure whatsoever. And as such, our community plan would look uh, substantially different. We've had lots of meetings. Um, over 100 people have shown up. We've, we're willing to uh, produce a Mountain Ranch community plan at no expense to the county other than you might have to um, edit some uh, typographic errors or whatever. But um, we can produce a news community plan. I've read all of the community plans that currently exist in this county. It's uh, some great work by some great people. Um, we can plagiarize that with the best of them. 
Um, I don't. I don't think it's going to cost anything more to the county for um, the citizens of Mountain Ranch to contribute um, a community plan, and we'd really like to be heard. I mean, we have a strong community, and, and uh, we've been out in front, I think, on a lot of issues. So um, we'd just like to not be ignored. Um, King George III made a mistake of ignoring a few people, and, and we ended up with a whole different process. So uh, we'd like to be included. Thanks. Good day, Mike Delorto from McCallamy Hill. That's M like McCallamy, I K E D E L L apostrophe O R T O. Uh, I am a registered voter in Calaveras County. I've always been since the day I could register. My family's owned property in Calaveras County or interest in property since before there was a Calaveras County. I participated in a couple of the general plans and spent the Six, the four years that was supposed to be six months helping develop the McCallum Hill community plan. Many of you have seen community plans and the long misery that goes with them. Um, and I would like to make a couple of comments here regarding those in the county. Uh, to my knowledge, community plans are those things that are supposed to focus on a smaller area with more detail, just like a specific plan is supposed to do. They're provided for in the law. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, you allowed the advisors to convince you that you should fail the county by declaring a moratorium. This will extend, this exercise uh, will extend that same process again and the worst thing of all this is that the reason, the principal reason that we have shortcomings in the general plan is because the board, including the board I was on, failed to uh, implement the mitigation measures that we recognized in the previous general plan because it was politically difficult. I commend the previous board to this current board uh, for adopting the rim fee one of the major issues that we had failed to do before. I commend them for doing the, San, the Valley Springs Benefit Basin and the Copperopolis Benefit Basin. The people of Copperopolis, oh, excuse me just a second. I have to stop, back up just for a moment. Uh, I've been informed that anybody who doesn't participate in this process, their voice will not be heard, although I have trouble believing that to be so because you represent all the people. So Roger Pitto, who couldn't be here today, boldly said, please say that everything you say that I say is what he says, so he's participating. Now that's pretty bold, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? You get on with it. <laughs> so uh, to my way of thinking, a couple things is, the people that invested all that time in Copperopolis, we're talking years. That needs to move forward. Valley Springs is in a serious state of lack of moving forward. The Valley Springs Public Utility District is, has difficulties. The other plans are fairly uh, complete, although they may not meet all the current requirements of the law, I think all you need to do is address those things that need to make them current. I also believe that those community plans should be separate documents and referred to in the general plan, um, which will allow those things to be taken a piece at a time when the time comes and the people are interested. I have another concern that I would like to address as far as participation in this project's concern of the general plan, and that is I attended, I think, four of these meetings. And in one of those meetings, I participated in the visionary group for McCallamy Hill. But I, was, I found it quite interesting that some of the people that are very active were participating in, in all those that I attended, the four I attended, the same people were attending visionary groups representing those different communities that they were not part of. 
that concerns me. I think one of the things you need to do is not have or recognize self-appointed committees because they're quite self-serving. In the case of San Andres, I represent some people who have property there, and I'm looking forward to talking to this group from San Andres, uh, even though he's involved in a very large portion of the property, he's received no communications, and if somebody from the San Andres group can let me know, we would like to be available to participate. Uh, with that, have a good day. My name is Al Segala, S-E-G-A-L-L-A. -L -L and I'm going to try to say something that you haven't heard before. And so, for me, so it's kind of difficult, though, because so often I repeat myself about being concerned about private property rights and forget, don't forget that uh, this whole thing is based on human rights. The purpose of government is to pr protect those rights of life, liberty, and property. I said that before, but it's so important because that's what our country's founded on. It's not the dictatorship of the majority. The dictatorship of, a, of the majority hurts individuals. This has been demonstrated this last century in many countries. And it's almost proven beyond argument that when government gets uncontrolled, and violates the individual rights of the property owners, you have an economic catastrophe and worse. I like to go fishing in Lake Tulloch. I have a pontoon boat. And I'm not very good at it. It's poor planning. I, I buy lures that I'm attracted to, but the fish are not. <laughs> Well, I use technology to try to make up for my poor planning. I have what's called a fish finder. And when I look in the fish finder, I see millions and millions of fish. Yet on the surface, I'm lucky if I see one splash here or there once in a while. And then once in a while, I do catch a fish. Usually it's too small, I have to throw it back. But here there's millions and millions of fish that are out of sight. They're out of sight. You can't even tell they're there. But there's, the, the lake is full of these fish, even though I can't catch them. Here we are. How many people are in this county? 50,000, maybe? Just under. Just under 50,000? How many people are in this room? I Co counted them. They're just about 80. 80 people. OK, these 80 people have a very passionate interest in the lives and property of that 50,000. We've got to be careful about property rights. Thank you. My name is Holly Mines, and I don't need to spell my last name because it's the same thing as gold mines. Um, uh, I would like to try to make a, a plea um, for trying to come up with a way of looking at doing community plans which is different than the way they've traditionally been done. I think all of us feel really overwhelmed when we think of the process that Copperopolis went through to create their community plan. And I, I frankly think that the diversity of the community, all of the communities can be reflected in the general plan update. Um, in a simpler way. I disagree with a former speaker who is arguing that each community should have its own community plan, which is a separate document, and then when somebody comes in and asks to look at the general plan, they have to carry out this big fat document with 20 books attached to it, representing all of the other communities. Um, a group of us uh, just a couple of weeks ago went to a seminar, there were probably 10 of us that are in this room right now that went to a seminar on uh, rural community development in which the, not the specifics of community plans uh, was discussed but ideas for community planning. 
And one of the things which really struck me was a computer program that was presented. That one was called Community Viz, like visioning your community. I know there are other ones. Um, they were able to put in front of the audience um, using GIS technology and um, other mapping technologies, pictures of an actual community. So let's say, me being from the famous railroad flat, we, we take a picture of the four buildings in our community, and then we start planning from there. And um, then people say something like, well, let's imagine that we want our, our local community to, to, in the next 20 years, to increase, to double in population. So we calculate the number of homes, and then we actually place the homes on this program. And from that, comes out information about how much water is going to be required, how much land, uh, what the implications are for wastewater, um, for uh, air quality, and things like that. I think there are really good ideas that are here today suggest new ways that we might look at the community planning process. And I think the goal of all of us is to have a really top quality general plan that then itemizes the specifics of the individual communities uh, and their special needs. And many people have pointed this out. You know, some people have really serious water problems and they don't care, or maybe they don't even have steep slopes. Some people care about building on the ridges, other people don't, things like that. So it seems to me that if we can start thinking in a little bit different terms and think about how we could simplify the community planning process so that the really important issues are the ones that are addressed and we don't come up with a document that tells you know, 20 pages of history and um, lots of, um, you know, sort of uh, nice talk uh, about each community, but, but itemizes the things that we think are the most important to um, preserve or to work toward. I, I think then it seems to me more achievable and less expensive. And if we were able to get some kind of grant, maybe this grant that has already been referred to, and, and start as much larger groups, maybe you know, like four or five communities getting together with one of these programs and learning how to use it and working together on it, then breaking down into smaller groups according to our communities and coming up with the variations that we request for our communities. I think it, it seems more doable, more affordable, and possibly would take a little less time than that awesome and overwhelming um, idea of embarking on a community plan for each community that could take five to 15 years. So that's my comment. Thank you. I'm Meg Self, S-E-L-F. And I'm here to say something very simple, beyond simple. It just sounds too obvious. I hear you say that every acre in the county in the general plan needs to tell how that acre is going to be used, what's its zoning, what's going to happen there. I see no way for you to know that without having the community plans, unless you are going to zone every acre yourselves and then the community plans would not have anything they could do. Um, an acre in a community is a lot bigger than an acre in the county, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. That acre may be very important in how it's used to people in the community compared to how the county might look at it. Um, looking at the whole county at the same time. To ignore what the community thinks and go ahead and do a general plan seems to me like, like it's impossible. So I would just like to make that statement. Thank you. Hi, 
I am Sloane Delorto, D-E-L-L apostrophe O-R-T-O. And I just have a short observation. Um, I hope I'm not going to offend anybody, but it appears to me that the majority of the people in this room are either retired or self-employed, like myself, so I'll take offense, or um, maybe unemployed. Um, what I'm not seeing, or you know, maybe working for the government or for various nonprofits, some of my friends here, many of my friends here, um, what we're missing a lot of is the input of people with real jobs, and that's frightening to me, because they care too. So the timing of these kind of meetings, whether they're general plan meetings or community plan meetings, I think the timing of them could be just a little better. I'm Julia Costello from McCallumney Hill, and um, I was a little frightened by Mike's comment that if we don't get up and say something, we won't get to say anything ever again. So, <laughs> but I was actually inspired by C O S T E L L O. I was inspired by Holly Mind saying, "Can't we simplify this and make it easier?" And so I would um, like to suggest that an example of that might be the um, <clears throat> excuse me cultural resource element for the general plan that. Um, Judy, Marvin, and I have been talking about quite a bit, but most of our communities up here want to preserve their historic character. That's their commercial asset. That's why the tourist comes. And so to keep every single community from writing their own historic ordinances, we could in fact put some effort into a cultural resource element in the general plan that people could buy into or edit or fine tune for their community, but it would keep everybody from having to do that um, in every single community and save a lot of time and effort. Thank you. Hi, Sharon Romano again, R-O-M-A-N-O. A couple of people have come up here talking about 80 people representing a group, and it's kind of nod at me a bit. Some of us are here who are involved in organizations that have several members and input. And, you know, I'd love to see this place just absolutely jam-packed. Uh, some of us have meetings in the evening, so we do include those who work. Um, but So I just want you to know that there may only be 80 people here, but these 80 people with the groups they're in, the industries they're involved in, their whatever, are representing a whole lot more than 80 people. Anyone else? In the immortal words of uh, Roger Pitto, Mike Del Ordo, and Yogi Berra, if you don't talk, we don't hear. Hi. It ain't over till it's Did over. Did you sign in? Sorry. Thank you. And, and for the record, would you state your name and spell it, please? Pam Taylor, P A M T A Y L O R. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for meeting us all here. It's very nice of you to give your time over and over and over again. I hope we can lessen these times. Uh, you people were elected by us. I'd like to allow you the time to do your jobs. Um, I think you all have a pretty good idea of where people stand and what they think and why. And I'm happy to see that you're trying to take action. Um, I'm happy to see Tom, thank you and Marita for making sure that we have an open bid process for this general plan. It's critically important. Things have to be done so that they're fair. Those of you who have been around a while know what my father thought of general plans. Not much. Um, he and I had many conversations about them. But one of the things that is important to remember in a general plan is its title. It's just that, a general plan. It is not meant to be specific. 
It should not be designed to be specific. It's supposed to cover the general county itself. Community plans are what they say they are. Therefore, each specific community, each community has its different needs and wants. And topography and water and whatever. Um, you can't have a community plan without knowing what your general plan is to begin with. We don't have a general plan without knowing what the state plan and what the state requires to begin with. When I was in grammar school, I learned how to use words and, and how to put them in an order when you diagrammed and when you outlined things. And if you follow the outline, there's something that starts something and then there's sub things that come below it. There's the state, below that is the general, under that comes the community plans. Um, you can't have everything all in the same place. It just doesn't fit. Then you're going to have your 20 volumes every time somebody wants to know something. It should be simple. It should be one at a time. One has to come before the other. There's a certain chronological order. I think it's fair to keep it that way. Um, it's not to say that there aren't specifics that each community needs and should be put into their own community plan if they show so desire. But we've got to start taking things one step at a time and all this other stuff that keeps piling on here seems to be getting in the way. Um, if you truly want to do a general plan, I hope that you can just focus on doing a general plan and make it general and keep it general. If you start putting things in there that are specific and that are itemized, and you roll community plans into the general plan, which is going to take an awful lot of time to do because there's different communities with different desires and that's going to be stirred around a little bit in that pot. We're going to end up with a Stepford County. And I don't know anybody that wants to live like that. You can have laws and laws and laws and laws and rules and rules and rules and rules and pretty soon nobody can do anything without going and checking those 20 volumes. And I'm not saying we need a Wallace County here, but we have to keep things in perspective, keep it simple, keep the general plan general, let the community plans come afterward. I think my dad would even agree with that. And we're never gonna have meetings at the right time and place for everybody. But again, the supervisors were elected by the people, the people have voted, even those that don't come to meetings. And I hope that you will allow yourselves the opportunity co to continue working that way. And I'll certainly support that. Thank you. Dave Self, yet again, SELF. And another brief item. I want to say this as respectfully as I can, but it's my understanding that we had a meeting in Murphy's. It was a good meeting. A lot of notes were taken. A lot of notes were taken back by Stephanie and Mentiers. As far as I know, they haven't been found yet. We have them. We just haven't posted them on the website. Uh, as far as I know, they can't be found. I'd like to be wrong. Uh, um, I know where they are. <laughs> you may be. That's wonderful. <laughs> There is an implication there that they have yet to be looked at and analyzed, and I won't push you on that because of the time, but okay. we have been asking for them, and Lynn was unable to find them, Stephanie. So okay. what I'm here to say to take your time is I hope that as the public gets recorded as how they're feeling, that you won't disregard them. Thank you. My name is Mickey Parks, M-I-K-K-I-P-A-R-K-S. I live in Rancho Calaveras, and what I'm here to state is that we have a special plan, and the majority of us that have started, have been in the special plan in the program, want to keep it that way. Um, so that will probably save the general plan funding quite a bit of money without dealing with us. We have a very specific plan. Our um, 
the developers have an area. They stated single family dwelling, no industry, and we would like to keep it that way. And we were told by uh, Mr. Monter that you can take it away from us at any time. And I would hope that you wouldn't. And if you do, you will have a fight on your hands. <laughs> I'm not threatening Who you. Who is Mr. Monter? Oh. Manure. Oh. Manure? Oh, Mr. Monter. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, uh, now I was at the first Valley Springs meeting. I was at the uh, Rancho Calaveras, the elementary school meeting, and he kind of fluffed it off and said, well, there's just no way. The Board of Supervisors put it in. The Board of Supervisors can take it out. And I would like to see the documentation to that if you choose to do that. Well, you know, in theory, that's probably correct. However, I wouldn't uh, concern yourself over but, it. What yeah. you need to do is attend uh, the meetings that get the, your input. They will be held at various times of the day. And the general plan is going to be very sensitive to the input of the residents of, Cal of Rancho Calaveras. Okay. okay. And I'm just telling you, I'm not threatening you. I got but it. There will be a fight. <laughs> Boy, I'd hate, to, I'd hate to hear you when you come up to me with a threat. <laughs> that was, that'll be really would, good. Would you like me to? No. <laughs> 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 Joe Kelly, one of the previous speakers brought something to my mind, a question that uh, how many other documents overlay the general plan or the general plan overlays? And I ask this because of conformity and consistency. Thank you. Doesn't anybody from Sheep Ranch want to get up and say, don't mess with you? <laughs> no, the community of White Pines has said, already said that. OK, any other comments from the public? One more. Yeah. OK. Good afternoon. Hi. My name is Rick Torgerson from West Point. T is in Tom. O R G E R S O N. And I was I was thinking about whether to say anything or not, but um, I wanted to draw a picture for you guys, um, give you some perspective. I've been working overseas for the last six months, and I'm about to head to Egypt, where they are building 400 cities right out of the sand. And imagine, imagine the planning that should go into that. And they don't even have they don't even have the uh, organization to do that. So when, when you look at that and you look at what we have here, it looks like uh, it, it makes it look pretty simple to think that community planning is a good idea. And what I've learned, I'm bringing over there to, to tell people how to properly plan their cities and communities. And I would like to, all the, all the information and all the knowledge that the people here have gained uh, in what a general plan is and what a community plan is and the energy and time that's been put into it, um, it just seems like a lot of it makes a lot of sense to, to keep it going and uh, allow the communities to develop in the way that they'd like to. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Glenny Noe and um, I'm a member of FOCUS in the Calaveras Planning Coalition. Can you spell your last name, please? Oh, I-N-O-U-Y-E. And I just wanted to uh, bring up something that I remember Mintier said at a uh, railroad flat meeting. He had mentioned uh, that one of the reasons, well, that the communities should go forward and, and start thinking about what they wanted for the communities, because then they would pick and choose the things that each community had in common and maybe incorporate, instead of 
reinventing a community plan, put that into the general plan. So all the things that all the different communities had in similar, instead of putting them in community plans and making it really confusing, just the stream them and putting it all into the common things into a general plan. Uh, that's one more reason to have uh, at least the communities working towards a community plan. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once? Going twice? Okay. Thank you all very much for your time and your input. Um, at this point, I'll bring it back to our community development director. I guess Stephanie, would you like to make to take a few um, comments on what was said? Or do you want to? I have just a few comments. I think that everyone's very articulate about what the issues are, and there's very little uh, responses that I have relative to it. Uh, just a couple of, of things that I did want to say is one is um, uh, to Mr. Deloro, Mike, uh, I did make a comment. He had said that they, he was um, going to let the community plan processes move forward, and then he uh, figured that there'd be a group of people that would show up at the board on the last day it's time to adopt and set forth their opinions and it would overturn all the community planning and I and in response to that I said that it's best to be involved at the very beginning and the board is not going to um, expect that the public is going to wait to the last minute to give their comments on the community plan general plan process but that everybody should be participating at the very beginning so that we have consensus documents moving forward and we don't have a lot of controversy at the last minute at the board meeting for 100 people to show up and say, I don't like anything that's been done, but I haven't been to any of the meetings. So I wanted to put that into context, that it, everyone will always have an opportunity to say what they need to say at every step of the way, and no one's precluded from participating at every step of the way, whether they've participated before, but it doesn't make sense is the question. So, and then relative to the open bid process for the general plan, I know there's been a lot of um, uh, public exposure and comments made, and I think that uh, when I have a chance to discuss that in the public, that um, the community will see that it was an open bid process. I just have those two comments. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So the task we have before us, once again, is to determine <clears throat> what, if any, the timing uh, of the creation of these uh, community plans, the updating community plans. And um, been a lot of comments today that were similar. Um, your comments are both thoughtful and have, have merit, I'm sure. Uh, so I guess I'm going to um, ask the board what we have to discuss that in front of you and, and uh, decide what we'd like to do. I do have some uh, disagreements with some people on, on some minor issues, uh, one of them being funding. That seems, to be, that seems to be the most important, although in some people's mind it's the least important. Um, if you, some of you are wondering where the money is, as you may know, cities and counties are required to balance their budgets, unlike the state and federal government. And if you would really like to be a student of where the money is, the county budget is available to all of you, and our budget hearings are open meetings. I encourage you to attend, and you will know where every penny is. Um, our staffing at the county uh, is down right now. Obviously, we don't have all the staff we would like to have, and more obviously than that, it does take staff to develop these plans. and. Uh, the old saying is, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. So if you want something, you have to buy it. And if you're not willing to buy it, in other words, if we don't have the money, it is very difficult. Um, I don't agree with the, uh, the notion that there's no county support. Um, if there's no county support, I don't know exactly what we're doing here today. And I would try to encourage all of you people to remember that, that the people that work for the county, including the five supervisors, we live here too. And we really do want to do what is best for the county. We will want to have your, know what your ideas are. That's why we have these meetings. And um, I appreciate you all showing up. Now we have to figure out a way to do this. 
Uh, we do need a general plan, although it's not required that it is updated every five or ten years. Only the uh, housing element is required to be updated every five years. But many people, yourselves, the board included, know that it needs updating, and we're working hard to fund and to accomplish that. As you may know, if you're following this, we have hired the uh, general plan coordinator to start that process. Somebody specifically assigned to do that, dedicated to that. And uh, without that, it's, it's, it's in t impossible to go forward. And, um, you know, sometimes I make corny little analogies, but I can't help it, so you have to put up with me because I've got the microphone. Uh, most of you know what a demijohn is. If you don't know it by name because you're not old enough, it's the big five-gallon glass thing with a little narrow neck on it. Some people put wine in it. Some people put water in it for some reason. I have no idea why. But this to me is, I, I listen to this, it's like everybody wants what they want. They want it right now. It's like you also know what a five-gallon bucket looks like. Well, I challenge you to take a five-gallon bucket of water and just pour it in there. It's not going to work. But if you get a funnel and you pour it in in measured amounts, you'll get the thing filled up without spilling any. And um, I, hate to, I hate to put this in such a simple analogy, but that's the way it is. We have to take this step by step, and this is one of the steps, okay? And we'll be many, many more steps before we get there, but I'm convinced that we're going to get there if we do that. I'm going to open this up now to board comments. Um, Russ, I'm going to ask you to start. You have, a, you have a community plan that's been in the works for how many years? Well, uh, my involvement has been uh, eight or nine years. It started a little bit before, before okay. that with a, with a previous group. But um, I, I, I heard a pretty consistent theme uh, from the 20, uh, one, two, three, four, about uh, 27 or 28 people that, that talked here today. The, the, I mean, everybody seemed to be on the, pretty much with the same philosophy that, that the community plans are, are important, that they should, should be worked on. Uh, the, the one lady, Pam Taylor, seemed to have a counter argument that, that you know, we had to keep them on the shelf and, and work on the general plan. Maybe I misunderstood her, her comments, but, um, you know, when, when you, uh, maybe I'm too close to the issue to be totally objective about it, but uh, when you have areas like uh, Copperopolis and Valley Springs that have such uh, 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 development pressures, uh, seemingly uh, they, they're higher than they are in other areas of, of the county, uh, I, I think that it's really pretty, pretty dangerous to continue to operate with a plan, an implemented plan, an adopted and embraced plan that um, uh, allows those communities to develop uh, along the lines that the people living in the community have uh, mutually arrived at these conclusions. Um, I, I've said this perhaps too many times, but the existing general plan uh, of uh, our county of Calaveras in the Copperopolis area, the, that, that uh, boundary that we have drawn around what we call the Copperopolis Community Plan, if you use the existing land use planning documents, it would result in a population of 100,000 people. Now, the Community Plan Committee uh, looked at what the existing entitlements are, and th that was discussed in various communities, what the existing entitlements are and, and what the, the projected uh, uh, psyche of the individuals living there that would like to see the town look like when it grows up. Uh, but the existing entitlements in, in Copperopolis are about 18,000. And, and we, we didn't have any crystal ball, but, but the collective wisdom uh, in the community meetings we came up with uh, that we, we could see that if we took all the remaining area that we could, could visualize being developed and applied the same densities over those areas that were previously granted, that it would result in a community that was sustainable, the infrastructure could be provided, and it would have about a 40,000 population. And, and that population would be bounded by the Copperopolis Mountains on one side and Gopher Ridge on the other, Highway 4 on, on the other, and, and natural boundaries li like the, the river. Uh, we have always felt like that that was a, a, a realizable plan. Um, I, I, I'm only one vote on this board, but, but I, you know, I, 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 maybe it's selfish motivation or whatever, but, but we, we can't hold uh, the the four to six thousand 
people, I guess 4,000 people during the week and 6,000 people on the weekends that live in Copperopolis. But we can't continue to hold them hostage without having a plan that that we that it becomes a document that we can hold people's feet to the fire about what's required. Now we we have a, a property or a, a developer that has, uh, by the grace of God, shown up down there, at Castle and Cook, and they're, they're building some wonderful stuff. If you haven't been to the com the uh, community center or, or the uh, Copper Office uh, uh, community or town square, we had a uh, the first ever. Uh, event there over the weekend had 2,000 people in this little downtown area, and, and it was just you know it was, it was like a, a a view into the future of what this place is going to be like, and that particular development is at exactly the right or at the the location that it, that, it, that they chose for that, and the methodology that they used to build it was arrived at by reading our. Copperopolis Community Plan, the Vision 2020 document that we started with, and then the, the draft plan that we have in place. CCWD has has used it as the instrument or the, the, the guiding document for their master plan for that area. Um, I would encourage you to uh, you know, to vote with me to uh, uh, to to kind of shuffle along Copperopolis community plan not at, at the detriment to any of these other plans because our, our work is is 99 percent done uh, we're not going to if you if you agreed with me that we could quickly implement that we would in many ways in my mind I see it adopting the Copperopolis community plan could expedite the development of some of these other plans because we wouldn't be by that 35,000 acres down there that we call Copperopolis um, Anyway, I, I, I certainly want to um, express my appreciation for the people that have, have uh, given their time today to come here. And, and uh, you know, th if there was any expectation that you weren't going to be listened to, please you know, be assured that, uh, that you have been. Uh, we're not going to leave any of you out in this process. So with that, I'm ready to make a motion. <laughs> no, just, just calm down a little bit, okay? <laughs> just calm down. The highest priority has to be the general plan. The, ha the board has already committed approximately $740,000 to the general plan that's over a two-year period. None of us like to hear Supervisor Claudino talk about funding, uh, but that is a reality. Um, Stephanie Marino recently applied for a grant to help fund community plans to look for funding, and uh, we applaud that effort. The energy and excitement that goes into a community plan, those of you who've been involved in one, um, takes patience, but it's, a, it's very exciting to be part of it. I've been part of two community plans in my district, Arnold, Avery, Hathaway, Pines. Each of them took over seven years to accomplish, and we probably have the newest community plans in the county, and ours are eight years old. So I very much support the community plan process. The board has um, some really financial decisions that we have to make and priority decisions that we have to make regarding um, communi community plans. Uh, Stephanie brought up that if we had community plans that were ready to go when we did the general plan, we can make it part of the total EIR process. Otherwise, we are doing separate EIRs all of which costs more money. So there's one, a financial incentive to try and get community plans done. If community plans can be done in parallel with the general plan. Okay, so I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, how do we accomplish that and not give you any money? Um, one, I mean, the board could prioritize the community plans. I think we can do things to move it along, to move each of the communities along, but that's a commitment on the community's part. 
Um, from my experience, the people that serve, serve the community plans in my area were very dedicated for seven years. They met monthly. So being part of a community plan process re um, entails a commitment on the part of those people who are part of it. I do believe, and it was mentioned earlier, that there has to be diversity on the community plan. That means philosophical, political, how you want to grow as a community, diversity on your plan for it to meet the criteria that will be required for public scrutiny. Um, there are things maybe the county can do. We can possibly provide locations for you to meet. We can uh, do website information. We could have dovetail on our general plan, do your website for the respective community plans. We could provide GIS maps. Um, I'm trying to figure out some ways we can get this going in each of the communities without dollars and resource. Um, I don't want to waste people's time, so I wouldn't want a community to go down. Um, the dilemma I have is you go down a trail for how you want to plan, and then you have to evaluate your community plan against the subdivision map app, the general plan, real estate laws, and so sometimes you need that technical expertise. Uh, someone mentioned, I think it was Addie, because I wrote her names like an Addie thing, uh, to train the community to do these things. Um, I think we could uh, possibly offer that service. Um, we need someone that could organize the overall effort without having a planner assigned to you, since we don't have any planners to assign to you. Um, community plans need to determine the boundaries of their community plans. And so if you're doing one in con uh, relation to a community next to you, you will have to determine your own boundaries. Um, there's things that I would like you to consider in your community plans, which is infrastructure. These are critical questions that the Board of Supervisors has to deal with with every single project that comes before us. And I truly challenge Burson and Wallace to figure out how we're going to provide water to them. Um, Holly Mines brought up, um, as I understand it, a, commu a computer model. So you could feed variables into it like we do for circulation plants and circulation alternatives. There's a model that you could use. Uh, depending on the costs of things like that, we could look at that. Maybe models, computer models or computer simulations, as I understood her, could be provided to the communities. Um, I will take up Julia's, Casilla's idea of letting her do the cultural resource element um, with Judith at no cost to the county. Um, I've heard it a couple of times. You know, I think Tom Infacino mentioned that really everybody is already on the train going out of the station. Oh, there's Judith. Is going out of the station and the board needs to, uh, to be there. And, and I agree with that. And philosophically, that sounds wonderful to do that. But we have probably close to a dozen group communities that want community plans. So how can we best organize that to let you proceed down your path, which I support your doing, with not a lot of financial and resource support for you? And so that's a challenge that I think you can meet. I think the county can provide some help. I've tried to give some ideas on how to do that. Uh, but I have to, again, say that your community plans need to be evaluated against the general plan. And as Pam Taylor said, the general plan 
has to be the highest priority for the county and then the subset would be your respective community plan so I offer or challenge you to join with the board in uh, community development to develop a mechanism to make that happen so there you go thank you very much Steve It's been interesting to me how we look at things. Uh, I, I keep hearing something that I consider a false dichotomy. Do we emphasize a, a general plan? Do we emphasize community plans? My view is that the community plans are building blocks for the general plan. And that without, I think that it's for several reasons. Number one, it, it is true that if you hold general plan meetings, uh, fewer people come. It's, it's amorphous. It's not, it, it's not real uh, evident to people what they would uh, have to say about a place far away. We seem to have several counties here. There's, you know, you got the Ebbets Pass Quarter. You've got what's going on down there in Copperopolis. You've got uh, the, the far hinterlands of, uh, of District 2. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of different takes, and that diversity requires us to be able to be responsive and inclusive in, in each of the uh, sensitivities and sensibilities. I know that people in Sheep Ranch, when Russ talks about going to 40,000 people, are horrified. <laughs> but I don't think that our sensitivities or our sensibilities should dictate to the people of Copperopolis what their land use should be nor do I think the reverse should be true. And without a full-throated participatory effort at the local level, I don't see how we're gonna put the whole together. So rather than question about what, are we gonna resource this or are we gonna resource that, I think we have to realize that this has to be dealt with as a whole. And the good news is that if you do it that way, that there will be a great deal more energy, more participation, and yes, skills and resources that don't necessarily have to be funded to get something done. And I, I like Marita's comment uh, toward, toward my good friend Julie over here, who, who is a uh, world-renowned uh, person of great planning capacity on cultural resources. And uh, uh, to my way of thinking, we need to figure out how to solidify relationships with such people. The talent in this county is extraordinary. Our ability to harness and organize it towards certain ends is questionable. And in my view, it takes leadership. The train may have left the station and we may be the caboose in it, but I, in my view, uh, we need to, as a board of supervisors, we need to get out and, and first admit we have a problem, which I think we already did. We studied it three different studies showed that we were structurally uh, challenged, that we were, uh, doc our documents were at least to some extent uh, conflicting with one another, and that's how we got into this conversation. Uh, can we reconcile the language in 30-year-old uh, community plans with our general plan? The answer is no. And does our general plan reflect the desires of specific individual communities? The answer is no. How can we, how can we fix that? How can it be legally consistent? Uh, it will require work. The problem with all of this is that we keep on stumbling at the starting line. Uh, I believe there's enough energy in this county to get these things done, but we have to structure it. The structure, in my view, needs to take a look at four situations at the, at the uh, community level. And I'll read them off here. I've been writing them as we go. One, one is, I think, unique. A, a eight-year, nearly finished product, actually, it's more like 12 years, but a, a product that is nearly finished, and we should cough it up. People, you know, what, it's been digested. I don't know what kind of ruminant we are, but, but in fact, uh, there's a real need to address the Copperopolis situation, and we should commit to that, get it before this board, allow the community to comment on it. If it needs revisions, get that done, and move out the door with it. Secondly, 
We have uh, a group of uh, community plans that are antiquated, outdated, and in inconsistent with the general plan. And I believe that those communities have work to do and that we should, if not do it for you, we should at least coordinate, facilitate, and assist where we can. And we should also help you, oops, help you wherever we can uh, to try to find funding. If it's in grants, that's great. Uh, if it's in some staff time or volunteer time, that's great. But we need to try to make sure that it's adequately resourced to get the work done. And there should be timetables and there should be targets. And I hope none of those include seven year long marches. Uh, you know, the Bataan Death March took a lot less time. Uh, we, we should be, we, we shouldn't take this many casualties, have this much argument, and over that amount of time to get things that are essentially can be summed up as what is unique about your town that you would like to preserve or build? Uh, what, is, what are the sensitivities of your town that are different than the general uh, view of Calaveras? If we devoted ourselves to that, identified it clearly, I don't believe it takes 100 or 200 pages, lengthy legal tomes. And I think we can get it done in less than seven, eight, or 12 years. I, I, except maybe in one or two towns. Well, let, let me be clear. I, I, we're not here to talk about the moratorium, but we have a limit of, of that that is, a two, I believe, a total of two years and that we are well uh, close to half uh, done even at the legal maximum. So there's not a possibility of what you suggest. But let me continue, please. Those with antiquated, outdated, and, and uh, inconsistent community plans really should at least get those up to consistency with what ultimately will be the new general plan. And I don't see how you can do one without the other at least moving in sync. Thirdly, we have people with very nice community plans. I think Mo Kill spoke up and said, we got a little fine tuning to do on, on our vehicle, but uh, we can probably accomplish it. And, and I think there are probably a good 10 communities at least that are in that mode. That seems like a doable thing, and it seems to me we ought to, again, provide leadership and some structure for it. It doesn't have to be over-resourced, but we should encourage. We shouldn't be putting it into a context of confusion. We should tell people that this is something that we would like to see done and, and help them as best we can. Finally, we have a whole lot of towns, and most of them seem to be in my district, that have no community plan whatsoever, and people are desirous of, of having a say in their future. Uh, the basic theory of this is that the people who live in a place know best what it should look like, what its future should be, and should be participating in setting the course. I find that fundamental to democracy and an essential task that is, uh, is part of this board's responsibility. And toward that end, many people, literally hundreds, have been involved. For those that say, well, I only see a few hundred people in a room, or only maybe five or six hundred participating in a particular district, and then there's all these other folks that are out there and they should have a say too. What I say is the door is open, the meetings are public, and yes, sometimes we screw up and you wait a long time and that's discouraging, but your tenacity and the, and the participation level and the civic engagement of the people of this county are unparalleled anywhere I've ever been in my life. And I believe that is the greatest asset that we have as we move forward. We don't all agree with one another. We don't even come close to agreeing even in this room. But the truth is that if we keep on denigrating people who participate, we're actually diminishing our potential. And that what we should be doing if we don't see enough people in the room or people who are working people, and I thought Sloan's comment was appropriate. We've got to meet at different times so that different people can participate. And we need to move it around to different places so that it's not always in one town uh, bringing out more people from, from that certain place. But those are things that you can see we are committed to and that we intend to, to accomplish. So my question to you is, if you don't see your folks in a room, get out and organize. That's what this is about. It's the fullest 
widest participation, and this county needs to make sure that everybody has the chance to have their say. Well, I was about to get to some of that. <laughs> the question, if I'm right, that the skills and the desire and the numbers are out there to accomplish this, there's really only one last piece, and that's the question of how do we as a county, relate to it. Uh, I believe we need to make a priority of hiring high-level planners. We have vacancies that are unfilled, and we need to move to that as quickly as we can. And that may mean incentives. It may mean uh, taking a look at what it is about us that doesn't get applications in from such folks. Uh, there's probably a lot to that, but we need to analyze it, and we need to correct that problem and staff up fully. We have one position, a planner three position, that we considered at budget time and did not fund. And we were holding off to that for final budget, which comes up uh, early next month as we review our financial situation. Uh, that position was to be devoted, as I recall, to working uh, on community plans. And I'll, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong on this. But it seems to me that it's that position that's pivotal. We have a general plan coordinator. Will we have a staff person to assist and facilitate and give technical aid to the people who are, are devoting their time to community planning? That's the missing piece, at least from the county uh, staffing perspective. And I, I, for one, think that that's a higher priority than some other things that are in our budget. But I know that, that this is a painful process and that there's so many important things that are going unfunded that this will be a, an important uh, discussion between all five of us. But in my view, given the level of public interest in this, the timing of it, and the consequences if we don't get this round right, uh, mitigate toward getting that position filled. Uh, so that's, I think, the answer to the question that came up and that blurted out uh, a moment ago. One last thing. Uh, and. I th there's been a lot of talk about this independent document versus an integrated thing, and do we bog down the general plan with a whole lot of detail if we put community plans in there? It depends on how we define this, and the sad thing about it is we haven't even gotten to that point. Again, what I would say is, what is unique and special about your town that you want to see put into a document? And is that a big, lengthy tome? No. Can we integrate, like so many other counties have done, the community components into their general plan? I would hope that would be the direction we'd take. There's one main, two main reasons for that. One is that I don't want to see us take a few up front, leave the rest to ex post facto consideration after a general plan is adopted, and then wind up having to either pay enormous uh, EIR costs uh, when we can't do it, consistently with the rest of, of the uh, general plan work, uh, we'll, we'll, our costs will be so overwhelming that we'll never get them done. So the timing has to be consistent. We have to do these things concurrently. And we have to not get so fancy with our dancing that, that it, it takes for forever and at 10 times the cost. So efficiencies in that require us to do these things concurrently. Uh, finally, nature loves a vacuum, and so do planning processes. If we don't proceed this way, what we invite is a level of conflict and mayhem that will be ultimately much more costly than if we hired a planner three and got to work on these things. Okay. Um. I'll give my comments. They'll be much more brief, I think, than Steve's. Uh, but I think there's been a lot of disingenuous uh, sort of comments made, uh, and I think Steve's are, are much that way also. But let me commence by just giving an overview. Uh, I've been involved in the planning issues in Calaveras County for uh, almost three decades now. Uh, I was elected to the board in 84. I was on the uh, Calaveras County Planning Commission uh, prior there, too. 
uh, and I think uh, I think I was on it for for around three or four years. So uh, I'm coming up on, on on 30 years of this, and uh, uh, it's uh, all sort of enjoyable to come to a meeting like this because one of the things that will always, always, I've never since since. 81 heard, heard something different uh, that comes out of a meeting uh, 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 um, such as this is that, geez, we really like our communities the way they are. And, uh, you know, we can have this meeting again 15 years from now, and the population can have uh, uh, gone up 50 percent to 75,000, and that will be one of the themes uh, uh, in the meeting, that we re really like our community the way they are now, and uh, we're very concerned about growth in the future. And quite frankly, if the board had listened to all those comments uh, uh, since I've been on the board of the Planning Commission, uh, there's probably a great majority of you who would not be here today. Uh, and that's one of the issues, is that people that at these meetings, as, as some, some speakers have pointed out, uh, uh, are very sort of self-serving self and self-centered uh, uh, on, on their comments. And that uh, 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 we need to plan for the future and we need to plan for additional people coming to the county just as we have come from the county. As I look out there, I don't see any Miwok Indians, so I'm assuming we all moved in here. Uh, maybe there's one gentleman there that is. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're all, we're all imports and we will have additional imports. Uh, uh, and one of the things that uh, um, um, if uh, out of these kind of planning processes that uh, and the environmental, uh, organized environmental community is very great at this, is basically trying to stop growth. And uh, it's always been my experience that if you come into this process with the idea of not planning for additional growth, but with the idea of stopping growth, you are going to have horrible consequences to growth because you will get the growth anyway. And if you don't plan for that growth, you're going to have a, a lot of disasters. And I will be very specific. Uh, since I've been on the board, most of the let's stop growth uh, advocates uh, have come out of Valley Springs. And in my opinion, one of the worst examples in the county we have for growth uh, is the Valley Springs Wallace area. As the people from Valley Springs and Wallace have pointed out, we have no infrastructure. In that whole area, we have a whole lot of people. We have one planned community uh, of, of any substance, and that's... Uh, um, um, Help me with the golf course there. La Contenta. La Contenta. La Contenta. La Contenta is the only development in that whole end of the county that has any real planning uh, uh, behind it. And, and one of the reasons we have so many problems down there is because there's always been sort of an organized group that's always basically tried to stop growth instead of planning for growth. And we'd better figure out that we had better plan for growth, that there's going to be additional growth, that you folks have all moved in here, my folks moved in here from, from some place, uh, of, uh, you know, I, I'm back in the county after having left for, for a considerable period of time, and others are going to come, and it's our obligation to plan for that uh, and, to, and to make some, some uh, uh, sense out of that. Uh, another one of the comments before we, I, I get into the essence of what we're talking about, which are community plans, uh, is, is this idea that people love to put forward, and it was put forward today, it was put forward in the, in the Copper Community Plan, that we want population caps. Well, you can't plan around population caps. I mean, you can't come to the year 2000, uh, or, or what, uh, May 1st, 2010 at noon, and say, I'm not going to issue another building permit because we've reached our population cap. And it's just not going to happen. I don't even think it's legal. So, you know, you can just sort of forget the idea that, that we get to just put a population cap on. That's, a, that's like the, the, when Jerry Brown was governor and we had the Club of Rome, uh, and they would divide the known natural resources by the current use, and they would say on May 10th at 12 noon in 2020, we're going to run out of coal, or we're going to run out of this, or we're going to run out of that. That makes no sense at all. And if we try to plan that way, uh, we're just going to have a disaster. So don't plan around population caps that you can just come to a date specific and just never issue another building permit because that's not going to happen. Um, the other thing that needs to be emphasized in this process uh, is that general plans, community plans, uh, uh, everything that goes into them, they're working documents. Only one person that spoke uh, today talked about the, the plans as working 
documents. We did two zone changes today. Uh, the state allows us to make general plan amendments, general plan amendments quarterly, so generally every quarter uh, or every three months, uh, therefore, we do general plan amendments, uh, uh, et cetera. This is not going to be in stone. Uh, uh, this is not, uh, 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 and, and a lot of times uh, uh, when we meet in the communities or we have a controversial uh, uh, zone change or community plan change or general plan change, people will stand up and say, we're betraying the public trust because this is the, this is the constitution of planning uh, or of growth and, and we're violating the constitution and we have violated uh, uh, the general trust because uh, uh, we're allowing this general plan or zone change uh, 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 to go through. Well, that's not true. It's a working document. It will be changed. Uh, we're not putting something uh, um, 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 in stone here. In fact, one, probably on the meeting we adopted, I suspect the following meeting we'll have uh, 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 proposals for zone changes and, and uh, probably even general plan amendments because what happens in the process is uh, we'll go through this process and then we'll do an environmental impact report uh, 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 so that we can adopt it. Uh, that will take a fair amount of time. Uh, uh, it will finally get approved, but once that process starts, the board isn't going to want to entertain any more zoning changes or general plan amendments because to do so would have to go back and, re and, and reopen the environmental document to, to adopt this thing. So, you know, we're, we're going to go three or four or five months without any changes because of the environmental document before we adopt the general plan. Well, it, during that period of time, people will come in and say, well, geez, I, I want this change and I want that change, and the board's going to say, no way, we're not reopening the environmental document, my God, it's been umpteen years and umpteen hundreds of thousands of dollars and we're not going to do it, so they're going to apply for a change. Uh, and, and that's the way the process worked, that's the way it's always worked, that's the way it's set up uh, uh, to work, that's the way it's supposed to work. Um, I think one of the things that gets lost, and a couple of speakers brought it up, and that's the concept of private property rights. Uh, and of course you can compare that to Holly Mines's comments where Basically, you don't need any community input, uh, uh, and you don't have any concept of property rights. You just have the government decide that some houses should be here, and there should be open space, and we want another cluster of houses here, and, and we want some commercial here, and we want this, irregardless of who owns the property. And it doesn't work that way, and you can't plan that way. Uh, uh, you can't just, you know, we do have planned communities uh, uh, in the county, but they were privately planned. You know, Saddle Creek is basically a planned community. Uh, 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 and they're even doing, doing commercial uh, uh, within the plan. We have to take what is, what is currently there. Uh, and in, particularly in the community plans, the community plans will basically uh, 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 just recognize what is currently there. And then the question will be is where, how do we accommodate additional uh, uh, growth? It will be where should the boundaries of the community plan be? Uh, 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 the next big issue, and, and Marita, Marita said just about everything I agree with except a couple things, uh, uh, which, is, which is means Marita's come a long way. Uh, uh, but a lot of this, quite frankly, just comes down to infrastructure. You know, if you don't have sewer and you don't have water and you don't have roads, you can just, you know, sort of forget it. And in, in Murphy's, uh, for instance, where I am, we have a hell of a time in the community plan area as is currently constituted. Uh, because the sewer and water districts, uh, 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 they're not CCIBD and they're in, the, in their old districts with old boundaries and they don't want to service the community plan area. Well, there's hardly any reason to have a dang community plan if you're not going to service it with sewer and water. I mean, uh, that makes, in my opinion, absolutely no sense at all. And that's going to be a, one of the big fights, Mr. Self, when we get to the Murphy's community plan is how are we going to get it serviced with sewer and water uh, with the two districts we have that, that absolutely do not wish to expand their boundaries uh, and won't even service the community, the, uh, the current community uh, uh, plan um, uh, area. But there are private property rights to this. And somebody has to come in with an application. The government doesn't come in with the application. The private property owner comes in with the application. And we have to know how that's going to fit. Uh, uh, and, and, we have, and we have to permit it accordingly. Uh, uh, you know, the government doesn't come in and, and, and apply, uh, apply for a four-lot four split or, 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 or a commercial building. 
uh, permit or a residential building permit. The government doesn't do that. The private party does that. Uh, and we have to know how to respond to that, and we have to have a plan that can accommodate the infrastructure needs, uh, including circulation, uh, of, that will, will take care uh, of, of that uh, future growth. And um, then let me get back to what, what's the issue at hand, because uh, I think it's really just ingenious, ingenuous some of the, some of the comments of, of, that were um, uh, given here. Uh, I am, quite frankly, interested uh, in, in, in spite of uh, 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 the feelings of some, and community input uh, into the general plan process and the uh, community plan process. I am not uh, at all interested in having the community plans uh, uh, tied in with the general plan uh, 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 process, with the exception of the three that, that the board, including myself, uh, committed to uh, in, uh, earlier, which was the uh, um, uh, which was the Copper Community Plan, uh, a Valley Springs Community Plan, uh, and a West Point Community Plan. Now, when the board did that, it said, if these things become controversial, if this is a seven-year process or anything like that, uh, and the general plan is going to be a year and a half or two-year process, then we're going to drop these and we're going to approve the general plan, and they will proceed independent, because we're not going to hold up the general plan uh, uh, for individual community plans. Uh, I, I hope the board still holds, uh, uh, frankly, uh, 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 to that position, uh, that we need to get the community plan done. We need to get it done as timely as possible, and the community plans should not hold up the general plan uh, uh, process. And quite frankly, when we get into the community plans, uh, my expectation would be there's going to be a lot more controversy within the communities over the community plan than there will be over the general plan, because uh, that's quite frankly where probably a, a majority of our citizens live, or in the community plan uh, uh, areas, uh, and they're going to be more controversial with a lot more input uh, um, uh, and a lot more emotion, quite frankly, than the general plan process uh, uh, itself uh, uh, will be. Okay, so let me get into uh, 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 my reasons then for, for the, the, um, uh, uh, the separation. One of them is, is, is that the communities are different. You're, and, and, you know, if you tie it all together, that means if there's controversy in Valley Springs over the Valley Springs plan, that ties up the, the Murphy's plan, the, 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 the Ebbets Pass plan, the, you know, uh, the Moak Hill plan, it ties up everything. And I think the community plan should go, to, go forward independent of each other. So if one gets bogged down in controversy, the others can go forward. Uh, and they will get bogged down in controversy. I mean, you heard Marita talk about seven years, the copper plan now, and, and, and the copper plan is with a whole lot of development money. Uh, 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 um, coming forward uh, to help with that plan because uh, 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 the, the developers, the, the, the substantial developers down there need that community plan, and that's coming up on nine years. So, you know, this is not a simple process, and if you think it's a simple process, you're wrong. Now, the disingenuousness of the comments, uh, 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 I find anyway, of the uh, Calaveras Planning Coalition uh, 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 is that they very much want the community plans to be part of uh, uh, the general plan. Now, why do they want that? It's not because of community input. It's because they want control of the process. And they can control the whole process of uh, the environmental community. L look at the environmental community that we have here today. They've already hired uh, an attorney who has shown up uh, basically uh, uh, at every meeting we've ever had concerning the general uh, plan uh, 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 discussions. They want it all together because they control, because the, they will be one of the controlling special interest groups and they're already organized and, and they're already in place. Uh, and they basically, uh, uh, if it's all together, uh, then they basically can either stop the plan and stop everything at one time because they're not they're not broken a, 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 a apart, or uh, they can control significantly the outcome. So you're basically going to have this, this this planning coalition that's basically going to be to a significant extent uh, controlling uh, 
the Arnold Community Plan or the Murphy's Community Plan, et cetera, and they're not going to be the citizens of Murphy's or the citizens of Arnold. Uh, uh, and, and, and they're going to want that. And, and what drives this? And, and look at it this way. If, if this group were just interested in community input, what are they doing hiring an attorney? I mean, an attorney is not, uh, not part of this community. I don't even think he's from this county. Uh, and yet they've already hired, a, uh, hired a, an attorney, and it isn't because to advocate for community input. It's to advocate for an outcome. They're very interested in a particular outcome. They're not interested in community input. Uh, and if we put all this together, then they're going to have control of this process. And, and a lot of this process in this county and every county is driven by the environmental community either through lawsuits or the threat of lawsuits. Uh, and if we tie it all together, uh, uh, they're going to have much more control of that process. If we break it apart, it's awful hard to come into the community of Murphy's or Arnold or any individual community where they're doing their own community plans and have an outside environmental group come in and file, file a lawsuit. That's much more difficult. Uh, so if you really are interested in community input, uh, then you will separate the community plans from the general plan. Includes my comments. Just one quick. <laughs> Tom, I, I just I wanted to say one thing in relation to that. If you're not careful, you're going to start giving me a reputation for brevity. And <laughs> okay. I thought it was demagoguery. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't do any, outdo any of that, folks. <clears throat> so brevity will be my my byword. Um. To my comments, there, there have been a lot of folks here today that I agree with on the board and from the public. And uh, as you can see, it takes these meetings to put everything in a pot and start simmering it and see what we get boiled down to or distilled to. Uh, and so I call it progress, even if it's not smooth. For me, the purpose of this meeting is to try to give the Community Development Agency some direction because everyone's on their case, so to speak, about what are you doing, what are you doing. Well, what they're doing is waiting for direction from this board. And even though there seem to be some folks here that doubt this, this board wants to give them direction, but we want also to get your input. So I've heard today some people don't, don't think we do. I've even heard the comment that we turn our backs on you again and again. That was not the purpose of this meeting. We're here to listen to you. For my comments, I'll, I'll, I will be more brief. Um, I don't believe that the community plan should precede the general plan. I don't know how they can. If the community plans are to be evaluated against the general plan, and it's been determined that our general plan is either deficient or insufficient or not defendable or needs to be thrown in the dumpster, whatever you want to call it, if it's not a valid general plan, I don't know how you're going to evaluate your various community plans against that when it is going to change. Now, having said that, I really have no objection to uh, these community plans being developed simultaneously, but we get back to the idea of funding. Now, for a while, and perhaps this will happen, in Valley Springs there is a group of people who at one point, and perhaps they still do, want to fund a position, that not to have them write the community plan, but them to pool their money and actually fund a position at the county for a planner to do the community plan down there if they want to do that. Uh, some of you folks don't think it's about money. Believe me, money is not the most important thing, but it is ahead of whatever is in second place because without it you don't have the ability of a planner to go in and, and uh, uh, prepare a document that complies with all of the federal and state regulations that are necessary. Um, if, if you're a person that can do that, you're missing an opportunity, you should come up to the Human Resources Department, get a job application, and come to work here, because you could do that. For a long time now, we have had a, corrupt me if I'm wrong, Stephanie, but we've had an opening at the Planning Department for someone to do long-range planning, even from before when Stephanie came to work there. It's never happened. Once we filled that, that person was immediately drawn into doing current projects. So for me, this depends on that. If we, we now have a general plan coordinator, we need to aggressively recruit the people that are, uh, the positions that are vacant, and 
I would like to see one of those positions dedicated to a long-range planner who at that point will start working on the community plans. And uh, the order here may still be uh, up in the air a little bit, but if I remember correctly, we have them in the order of Copperopolis, Valley Springs, San Andreas, and West Point. These are long and arduous tasks. You can't just, I mean, I apologize for this analogy, but it's the same thing, folks. You can't take this five-gallon bucket and pour all that water into a narrow-necked five-gallon jar. It's not going to work. It'll go all over the place. It'll go everywhere but in the jar. You have to take these things one step at a time, but the general plan um, has been called the blueprint or the constitution for land use in the county. It's the boss. It has to be there before you can um, evaluate other plans against it. It, it, it's just so simple that I, I, I don't know quite how, more, how I can explain it any, any better. Um, Maria's suggestions are good with the uh, and providing uh, information to these various community groups so that you can get ready. You can do your visioning. You can get your maps. You can have your, uh, your, your community groups decide what you want where. When the time comes for your community plan, to be worked on by a professional in the planning department that is dedicated to doing the community plan for your community. I don't see how this can work any other way. So rather than getting here with a shotgun, we want to get with a, with a fine, uh, accurate rifle with some crosshairs and actually hit some targets here. Um, let's see. That pretty, mu pretty much sums up what I want to say, folks. I've said this before. You're driving down the road in your car and you get a flat tire, you've got to stop and pull over to change it. You can't do it while you're driving down the road. The community development agency is still overwhelmed with projects. We need people dedicated to the general plan update, and then we need people dedicated to these community plans. The community groups are wonderful. I wouldn't want to see you diminish your work at all. I'd like to see you increase in numbers and participation. You can get ready for when we do the community plan, but the community plan is going to be done by a planner in the planning department of this county because they have to deal with the state and federal government and they have to make that plan compatible. So getting back to the issue, I said I'd be brief and I am. What we want to do here today is to try to give direction to the community development agency so they can quit getting beat up for not doing anything. Um, so. The board needs to decide about the timing here. And for my money, the general plan has the priority. If there is funding, and this is an if that I have no idea if it will happen or not. If there is funding for the community plans, I would not object to them being done simultaneously, but at no time can they get ahead of the general plan. And when the funding becomes available, I would like to see the order remain with Copperopolis, Valley Springs, San Andreas, and West Point. But if we just keep talking about what we should do and we keep talking about the value of a community plan and how uh, input from everybody is great and how one uh, group shouldn't influence the other group and the government should do it all and citizens should, we're just going around in circles, folks, have you noticed? We need to get some traction here and the only way you're going to get traction is if we fund the positions to work on this and put a priority to it and take it one step at a time and do it. So my opinion is to make continue with the general plan being the priority. We've done that. We have a funded position. The next thing we need to do is aggressively recruit someone in the long-range planning area who will not only get the community plans done, maybe even simultaneously, but will stay there in perpetuity if this is going to be a living document. You can't take a long-range planner, do the long-range planning, and then stop. You have to continue the long-range planning to keep from getting in the same place we're in today. Am I right? Okay. So that's where I'm at. I don't know if... I think you agreed with yourself. <laughs> One time in a row. So my desire is to know if the board agrees with that or not or we have to stay here until we give the CDA some direction. I, want, I guess I'll go back <clears throat> to where I am. I think 
We all agree we want community plans. I believe we can do some things in parallel. And the funding issue aside, um, and I believe each community can, we can put a proposal together for each community. We can pick locations. You can pick members of your community plan and the county, I'm sure, could provide some training to just get you started in the process, whether it's the visioning, uh, the elements, what a general plan is. Some of the did in all the respective communities. We can talk with um, our technology services to see if we can utilize website for some communication. And, and then at least we start on the process with some very simple things that might be done. The board members who have communities that want community plans need to be challenged to make sure that there's philosophical diversity on your community plans. So when they're evaluated, when they go through the environmental impact analysis, environmental review, which they have to, then you know where or how you'll be challenged. Your challenge would be to see if you could com complete at least the essence of your community plan at the same time the general plan is going. And as Steve said, there are many talented people in communities that might be able to fill the void of the county being able to provide you a planning resource because we're not going to have a planner available for all the community plans. So I would like to see us proceed on that and each supervisor can kind of develop a little bit of a roadmap and direction for communities within their respective district of what they might like to do and, and take it in a small bite. Because I think the will is there. Um, let's just try and keep some momentum that's very workable. And I think uh, developing just somewhat of an outline, determining a location, having the county do some training, uh, doing a website, and making sure there's diversity on your community plan group is relatively, I'd let, unless Stephanie says any differently, is not going to be that difficult to start. And then each community will have different points where they will be. Some of you might take seven years, and if you do, you won't be part of the general plan environmental impact report and we'll have to deal with funding you in your environmental impact report somewhere else down the road. But I think the challenge is there and for some of you, you already have plans you're wanting to update them from some of you that, that don't have them, you'll at least have preliminary work done that you can do with the skills within your respective communities. So I would like to see us start on those things. And then uh, Stephanie can tell us what kind of time frame or cost that she sees the county of having to lay out initially and come to us at budget time in two weeks and then we can test the will of the board. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I've just heard of a explain to me exactly what we did seven years ago. I, uh, Marita, uh, are, are you suggesting that, that Copperopolis should go back and do no, all this stuff again? No, I'm not suggesting that, Russ. I mean, we've already asked, Stephanie, I believe, has already asked that we proceed with Copper. But okay. we have the Blue Mountain communities, we have the Valley Springs. Copper is a separate issue. We want to take San Copper separate. And okay. San Andreas, we want to take Copper separately. I don't have a problem with that. I don't know what it looks like. I mean, I want to know if it's an environmental impact report that's required. What, is, what does that entail? What's that going to cost? Are we going to evaluate it against the current general plan? What, what does that mean? I don't have a problem with copper. Okay. I mean, Bill can pull the board. Um, well, my, my original 
comment or a question. The board agrees with the priority for the community plans whenever they get done. It's Copper Valley Springs, San Andreas, and West Point. At one point, um, they can be done simultaneously, but if they cannot, that's the order in which we had agreed at one time to do them, the well, oldest to the newest. Well, yes. Let me try this, because this is, this is where the board was earlier, and just see if the board's still there, and that is that uh, 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 the num number one priority is the general plan. Uh, uh, c consistent with that uh, uh, priority is to concurrently uh, uh, process, uh, uh, develop and process uh, uh, the Copper Community Plan, the West Point Community Plan, and the Valley Springs Community Plan. And San Andreas. With, well, I don't think we included San Andreas earlier. Yes, we did. We? Okay, then, and, and San Andreas. With the caveat that if either of those general plans, because of timing or controversy, holds back the adoption of the general plan, uh, that they will be dropped f from the general plan process. They can go ahead and continue to be processed, but they will not become part of the general plan process so we can get the general plan adopted. Exactly. Okay. And then uh, once the general plan is adopted, then we will come back and look at the other community plans. And we can, we can do those concurrently. Right. Uh, they don't have to be a, a, a particular ordering, particularly if we can get some development money to, to help uh, uh, fund the cost. But, I, I will just tell you, like, like in Murphy's, I would very much like to have a consultant that's knowledgeable, look at, look at a couple issues that I think are absolutely critical to, 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 to the development of the community. And, and uh, so I think some money is going to need to be expended. This isn't just, you know, hold a, hold a community meeting at the, at the Native Sons Hall, and after one community meeting, we'll draft a community plan. And then gonna, how it's going to work, uh, we're not going to get anything out of it. So we're going to have to address some real significant issues uh, 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 in the Murphy's area. Uh, but it's going to require money. And the question then becomes the source of the money and what other community plans, you know, what do we estimate they're going to cost. We may need to prioritize them. We may not, depending on, on the funding sources uh, available, whether it be grants or development money or whatever. But I think we should stick with what the board uh, 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 prioritized uh, uh, at, at, at this location here, I don't know, two or three months ago, which is we do the general plan, we'll do those, those other four community plans concurrently. If they hold the general plan back in any way, then we will drop them from the general plan process but, uh, but, but continue processing them. And upon the, the adoption of the general plan, we will uh, 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 then entertain uh, uh, updating the other community plans. Well. So In theory, I agree with that, I, but I, I think that part of the solution is to, um, to fill these vacancies that we have in the, in the planning department. Yeah, but that's not what's before us right now. That's a separate issue. That's a personnel issue, and we have to address that. That's, but, that's, but that's true, not, but the long-range planning position okay, over there. I agree. I think everybody this. agrees the positions that have been allocated need to be filled. I don't think right. anybody disagrees with that's that. Fine. And, and that probably goes for every department and county government. But, you know, that, that's not well, what's know. before us today. I think we should pull on that issue and see if the board is still there, since that's where we were before. Steve? Well, are we polling now? Uh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Can I, I, well, I, I just, sure this is not a study session. It's actually a, an, a, a regular item on the board, so the board can't take a vote okay, today. Okay, well, then I think, one. then I will move it as a minute order so we can discuss it, maybe get a second and discuss it. Oh, I'll second. All right, discussion. Uh, one, one part of the discussion, there have been different references to what we had previously uh, recommended in regards to the Blue Mountain communities. Uh, actually, it's not West Point. It was yeah, the four well, towns whatever. included in that, yeah. which are, Wils I just want to get it on the record, okay. Wilseyville, Railroad Flat, Glencoe, and West Point. Okay. But it was all one community plan. It, it was actually, um, there were it's three different pieces. Two, two were joined together, West uh, uh, Railroad and Glencoe. And the other two were working independently from from those, uh, but the goal was to work them together. Uh, time, I thought when we talked wise. about that as a board, it was one community plan that we were going to do up there. Is that not accurate, or is that accurate? Um, I believe we talked about covering those four towns because they were included in the uh, land use uh, changes that we had considered. It's been well, my understanding to do that three or four community plans versus one community plan. I thought we had committed to one community plan. It's my understanding. I think what we said was community planning in those four communities. My understanding is that we, um, because I've been attending some of the meetings is that they wanted to do separate community plans, but they're far along in the process, and I don't think that. 
there's much difference if we uh, say that all three get community plans up there. It won't okay. impact the yes. process. Okay. I don't mind that then, but I just want the general plan to go forward. So if the community plans that, that, are, that we are, are included in this motion, and I'll amend my motion to include that, start to hold back the general plan, then the general, they need to be cut loose of the general plan. We need to proceed with the general plan, even, even while proceeding with their, with, yes. with, with their development. But we don't want it to hold back the general plan because that's what's going to hold back the rest of the community plans. Absolutely. Okay, and that's your motion. That's my motion. And it's been the seconded. Is there any hold, further I guess, discussion? I, guess I amended it a little bit to include okay. Steve's and, comments. And you agree with that second? I agree with the amendment. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hey, look at I got a unanimous vote on one yes. of my motions. Right. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Now, now there, was, there were several other things that came up during the course of this that I think are worth at, at least polling, if not uh, having minute order. Marita raised a whole series of support issues, which I, I certainly heartily endorse. Uh, and I would hope that we could implement those uh, along with that. And that would be in relation to the... Uh, You're talking about the available information. Yeah, the community plans that are referenced in this last minute order but as well other communities that are engaged in this process would receive the, the aid that Marita's talking about. Mm -hmm. can, can I address that real briefly? Yes, please. Um, I met with Lynn O'Connor, our general plan coordinator, last week, and she's doing some research right now. Um, she's working with the libraries to put um, books on educational books in each of the county libraries. Uh, we're going to be purchasing them for them and placing them, and Maury's going to work with us on making sure there's adequate circulation. Um, we are going to be looking at updating our website so that we can uh, provide more of an educational information updates on it. And uh, we've loaded several community plans. We will get the rest of them loaded very shortly um, so people can download those off of our website. Um, we, I've also asked her to check with the U.S. Uh, or the um, UC Davis Cooperative Extension to see if they can provide community facilitation training to volunteers who could then help facilitate some of the community meetings. So we are researching some of those ideas, um, trying to get them in place, uh, just so that, um, that, that the people, the anticipation was that the people be able to continue on their own if, if nothing moved forward with us. There were two other things that have come up that are important that are on the board agendas for the next couple of meetings. The first one has to do with recruiting uh, for the, the uh, planner three positions and incentives related to that. That will be coming back to the board, I That's believe, next week. Next week. Okay. Uh, secondly, there will be a budget process in which we will be considering the uh, issue of hiring a, a third planner three that would uh, be devoted to community planning. Those are two things that we will not be taking action on today, but uh, we should be mindful of upcoming and uh, be responsive to the things that came up today in relation to those. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate your input. Look forward to our next meeting. So, Steve, is it going to be a part of Rex person or not?